In the early days of the arcade, there was a game known quite simply as Asteroids. This is the remarkable story of the utterly certifiable Skipper Pat, his ghostly first mate Jason, and the mysterious and always ambitious fourth mate Miles. This is the SS Triangle. Brush, 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 see my teeth. Brush, 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 brush. Those who brush their pearly white teeth will never suffer spontaneous combustion in their sleep. My mother has always been quite devoted, and she made delicious cupcakes. Oh boy, a puppy! A taquito breed, if I'm not mistaken. Like Hachiko, the legend and lore. I will name you Fufu McGillicuddy, and we will be ever so happy. I will teach him how to chase fire hydrants, pee on cats, and how to code visual basic and C sharp. Well, maybe I'll get somebody else to do that. I'm not very good at that. I'm going to show my underlings our brand new friend. Come on, little guy. It's okay. Well, no, no, it's not. Wait, I mean, yes, it is. Let's go. First mate, Jason. The mysterious poltergeist of legend and lore. Fighting the evils with it. Ah! What's that? Take a look at my new bearded dragon friend. And he's so adorable. His name is Wendy McDonald's. His middle name is Burger King. That appears to be a very large and probably extremely dangerous spider. Where did it come from? From the nightmares of tormented fourth graders. Why did you do this to me, Miss McKillicotty? What? I taught him how to eat people. I, I mean cake. Yes, that's what I meant. I meant cake. Aren't you afraid that he might attempt to ingest you and masticate your fleshy exterior? I hope you don't kiss your mother with that mouth. Ah, what in the name of the asteroid belt is that creature doing aboard this ship? Jason, is this your doing? Honestly, I mean, what? I mean, come on. Seriously. It's the skipper. It's the Emperor Pat. He's the one to blame. Mayhaps I be, but he's so cuddly. I'll feed him another cake. Chocolate cake. Patrick, what are the green places are you doing? You wouldn't tell. You're mad. Yes, I would. Oh, wait. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I bet cake. To the fridge! I may be just a floating poltergeist with a PhD in advanced astrophysics, but I can pretty much assure you that this is no ordinary creature. My best guess is that this is a kumanga, or diminutive relative thereof. A spider kaiju from Sogal Island in the South Pacific, if I am not mistaken. What is he doing here? Enjoying a leisurely vacation among the stars! We have to explain everything to you. Fetch him where Virgin! Pina Colada! Yes, sir. We've developed a telepathic bond, much like the one Jason has with ham and cheese sandwiches. Cheese. Did I say human cheese? Honestly, I may just be a first grade dropout who worked as a skipper of a local fast food seafood franchise on the Jersey Coast prior to the horrible computer glitch of the summer to be a board top secret mission pilot of a two dimensional triangle to destroy asteroids for no apparent reason. <laughs> But wait, uh, what? Look, he's eating the floor panels. Oh, he made his way to the electrical panel. Yes, now we can have disco. Now he's playing with it, with his mouth, like a bowl of spaghetti. And the lights are now flickering, and now it's completely dark. I'm frightened beyond rational thought. Ooh, I feel very Miles, is that you? Absolutely not! <laughs> We can dance if we want to, with an evaporated if we choose. Because the Franks don't dance with spiders in their pants, then we'll have to buy new shoes. Spider dance! Spider dance! Come on, go try and find you. Spider dance! Spider dance! Spider dance! Super dee doo dee doo dee dee doo dee that wasn't a very safe song. <laughs> Woo!
We are climbing aboard the SS Triangle. Hey, Crinkle Nose! I'm busy recalibrating the asteroid detectors. Perhaps you should wait until later to infuriate me. I'm shine white pants. That's news. Wouldn't you agree that the shininess of my pants is directly proportional to the awesomeness of my authority? Obey me! I look upon my wonder of leggy attire. And furthermore, those who look at my shiny pants... In due time, the shiny in due time, I will usurp the authority of this... this, this, this I don't even know what it is. Play my place as skipper of this vessel. Only a short while ago. Only a short while ago. Only a short while ago. I warm, and they gave me magical powers like this. I can dance around and do a jig. La 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 la. Do it a jig, do it a jig, do it a jig. Fifteen minutes later. Do it. Do it a jig. Four days later. Hey! What did I tell you about thinking while I'm talking? When did you stop making sense? I can't remember back that far. Kumanga! Seize this insolent subordinate. You'll never get away with this! Get, get away, get away with what? Later on that night, Pat was visited by a ghost. Which isn't incredibly out of the ordinary, mind you. Skipper Pat, wake up. Ah! Ghost Godzilla? I thought you were dead. I am. Oh, alright. Well, tell me, fellow spirit. Why are you here? Is it because our vessel lacks perfect Newton? Just give me the word. And I'll make this vessel absolutely splendiferal! I'm here to tell you that your shiny pants are haunted! Haunted? Can I get that out and dry cleaning? No, not unless you pay extra! Your pants are haunted with the ghost of me! Oh, okay. So that sounds cool, actually. Were you like an evil wizard who found a pair of shiny pants and turned them into a horcrux? Did you hide them in a fucky cave with a bunch of zombie guards? Because that's where I think I found them. After I fell down a manhole cover and met a wizard and he said, Hey, where these pants? Fifteen minutes later. That's I don't want to wear no pants! Please destroy your pants and set me free! But you're so cool! With my faithful companion, Kumunga, <laughs> and my new faithful companion, you, Hi. we'll make a stubble team! We can ride any rock! We can climb any stone! Give the pants to me! But they're keeping me warm and they're so shiny! No! My horcrux pants! Why would you do this to me, Ghost God? Why? I trusted you with my pants not to get them dry clean. You got them circled instead. Because I'm not Ghost Godzilla at all. I'm... Jason! My poltergeist first mate? Why would you take my pants? This is a violation of trust and personal property and awesomeness and cheese noodles. And why would you do such a thing? I trusted you! Because you stole them from me. I did not steal them from you. Oh wait, yes I did. That's right! Yeah, my bad. Why did you throw them out the window if they were yours? For a dramatic effect. I wonder where they are right now. Hmm, I wonder if they sell five sandwiches for five dollars at Arby's. Those beef and cheddars with bacon. Oh, they're so good. It's almost like rainbow twizzlers in my mouth. Wait, that's a good idea. I should make Arby's with rainbow twizzlers on top. Then they wouldn't be such a boring, monotonous pink color. They'd be rainbow. And there would be twizzlers in them. Twizzlers! I like twizzlers! I think I'll have some now. Ugh, yeah, twizzlers. Ugh. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got mildly distracted by Twizzlers. Give me some I narrator. like Twizzlers. Twizzlers. Because you're not worth it, but you like to pretend you are. Meow, chicka, wow, wow. Go ahead. Just give me the word, I'll make this vessel as. Just give me the. I did the first time. Why were you recording that? I know, it's a hard one. It's just a couple of. I quit. I'm gonna get my. I'm gonna be my trailer. I've only got three lines for you to read. <laughs> Ready, <laughs> set, go! Abs. Abso splendiferal. Abso splendiferal. Try it one more time. Abso splendiferal. Abso splendiferal! Abso. Abs. Abso splendiferal! This isn't working with my bad motor skills. That's okay! Abs, 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 No, it's gone. Abso <laughs> splendiferal. Abso splendiferal. No. <laughs> you were 
one syllable so away. It was just one syllable away from being perfect. Absolutefic. Supercalistic FBI. It says just... right here, abso splendid fernal. It says abso splendid fernal. Abso, ab, absolutely. Abso splendiferal. Abso splendiferal. Abso splendiferal. Abso splendiferal. I like. <laughs> abso splendiferal. No, I was laughing. Abso splendiferal. Abso splendiferal. Abso. Ab. Abso splendiferal. Abso. Ab. Abso. <laughs> abs, ab, abso splendiferal. Abso splendiferal. Don't say it like like. I'm trying. <laughs> abso splendiferal. Abso splendiferal. Yes. 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 Yay! We did it. We did it. Abso splendiferal. We're the substitute kaiju critics. Spelled thusly, K A I J U K R I T I C S. <laughs> that wasn't even remotely funny. Was it supposed to be? Anyway, Esky and Gabra can't make it today because they're caught in traffic. Oh, come on! Move, people! Hey, Monster X! Can't you just transform into Kaiser Ghidorah and fly us to the studio? Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Then you wouldn't have to do a thing. Keep driving. Wait, I'm driving? So, we're gonna review this year's smash hit. District 9. So here's how the plot goes. It turns out that there's this ring, and if you wear it long enough, you become Gollum. Who thinks it was worth a dozen repressions? I don't think that's the right movie. Of course it is. Wait, you said we were reviewing Airplane, right? Uh, perhaps I should take over from here. The film centers around a man by the name of Vika Van de Merva. He goes through a dynamic change of both character and appearance. Boring. Let's start reviewing Ponyo. But we're in the middle of a District 9 review. Ponyo is a wonderful movie, but District 9 is a fantastic piece of cinema in and of itself, presenting an allegorical parallel to the horrors of apartheid. And Ponyo has ham. What? Ham. Hamity ham. I need some ham. Uh, um... You take one down and pass it around 17 bottles of Dr. Pepper on the wall. You know, it wouldn't have been so bad if you had it started at 13,000. Hey, turn up the radio. I love this song. All right. Crank up the bass, man. I'd like to crank up the bass, but not at the expense of the treble. Sorry about that. I couldn't find a fat enough pig, so I guess I'm out of luck on the sandwich. Uh, um, okay. Anyway, District 9 has a lot of action, a lot of heart, but it's also incredibly violent. I wouldn't recommend it for any of you young or queasy viewers. Remember what happened when we saw it, Skelly? <laughs> uh, please stop puking. It's disgusting. <coughs> Was it really <laughs> necessary to have so many heads explode? No wonder I'm so hungry. I seriously need a ham and cheese sandwich. Yeah, that was wonderful. So what do you rate Airplane Legion? I rate District 9 a District 9 out of a District 10. That was funny, right? Ham. That's it for us. Good night, everyone. And remember, don't ride to work with Monster X or Gabra. And why not? We're on time, aren't we? Oh, the gun thingy. I'm so hungry after that endless commute. Hey, Skeleturtle, do you have any ham? I did. It's gone now. Sucks to be you, man. Sucks to be you. You seriously creep the crap out of me. You know that, right? Who? <laughs> hey, don't scare Gabra like that. You stay out of this. Boo! So, Legion, are you seeing anyone? Welcome to Season 4. We're the Kaiju Critics. Back by popular demand, which we attribute to our article on TVTropes.org. Thanks again to the pale, friendless nerds who made this possible. Hey, don't make fun of our animator. Hey, I wasn't making fun of him. No, the, the people from the website. 
Anyway, we're still spelling kaiju critics with two Ks. Because spelling it with three Ks would be a hate crime. We're going to review the informant first and foremost this year. I thought it was a nice, amusing dramedy that... I thought it wasn't even remotely amusing. It seemed to lack the proverbial high fructose corn syrup that makes a movie dangerously delicious. Let's dispense with the unnecessary corn jokes right away, all right? And delve right into our usual cutaway. Behold, our version of the informant. Hey. Yes? Those guys are involved in a price-fixing scam. Hey! Yes? That guy's kissing a mop. No creepy, it's not quite legal. Hey. Yes? Public urination! Are these cutaways even necessary anymore? They're not really too keen on revealing or reviewing anything. It's almost like that time that I was trapped in that cage atop Curly Peak with the Raven King, and we had to escape using only our no, no, lasers. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm gonna pretend like that didn't happen. I rate the informant a solid 8 out of 10. I rate the informant two Tom Poppers out of a possible Matt Damon. And I'll throw in that guy from Community for good measure. You... Astound me. Thanks for watching! And remember, anything can be candied, including beets. But if you try to candy candy, then you will create a black hole that will absorb the entire solar system. I tried it, it works. And you see that guy? Yes? Bacon smuggler. I knew that. Spelled with two K's because the curse sound is apparently the basis of all humor. Old and new. Monster X is out of the studio today for classified reasons. So, how much bacon did you see him smuggling? More than you can possibly imagine. I can imagine roughly 1.3 trillion parts. Okay, then significantly less than you can possibly imagine. So we're going to review Astro Boy. The movie starts out with a boy. Summarize the movie for us, Dutalios. With a boy who ultimately becomes an Astro Boy! And though that would seem like an accurate analysis to the uninformed, it's actually not true. Here's a picture of what I think it would be like if the Beatles rode around in a van solving mysteries! Why is Ringo wearing a collar? Because he is Scooby-Doo! This is proof positive that there can't be two goofy monsters doing these reviews. One monster has to be the straight man, and if I'm the straight man, then very strange things will begin to happen on planet Earth. <laughs> Imagine yourself on a boat in a river with tangerine trees and marmalade skies! Anyway, Astro Boy was pretty deep. I highly recommend the film. Look, it's the girl with kaleidoscope eyes! Hi, everyone! Bye! Bye. Ringo Star, where is you are? Over here! Ringo Ringo Star! Well, it's that time of year again. When we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior? I do like that part, but there is one thing that I don't like about the Christmas season. The fact that nobody seems to spell my name right on these Christmas cards? Who is Gavala? No, the fact that I can't sing. It's too bad everyone can't have a beautiful singing voice like me. Oh, holy night! The stars are brightly shining! You see, that's a great voice. Could you teach me how to sing like that? The trick is to pretend that planet Earth is about to be hit by a small black hole. And the only way to avoid impending doom is to pretend that the entire audience doesn't have any clothes on. Only then will you realize that you can sing. Wow, that's just convoluted enough to work. Ahem. We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we traverse afar. Field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Hey, it works, sort of. That's the spirit! Wait, why are you looking at me like that? Because I've never seen you without your cloak on until now. Oh. I can't believe we had almost an entire episode devoted to the Beatles last week, and I didn't even get to say the one line that any director with an ounce of self-respect would have given a character like myself. After all, I am a walrus, right? Come on. So I'm gonna say it, okay? Ahem. I'm the tax man! Oh wait, I screwed it up! Can we start over? Hmm, 
legendary pictures to create a new Godzilla movie. Fascinating. Zilla quoted as saying, What am I? Chopped liver. Hmm, oh well. Hey, who's in there? <laughs> Is that you, Dutalios? Little Godzilla? The rarely seen and or mentioned Paragon Van Horn. It's me! Bobby? No! Monster X! Oh! What you doing? Yeah. Are you peeing? <laughs> Are you pooping? <laughs> Are you putting on makeup? Number two! Oh! See any interesting movies lately? I'm on the toilet! What? Hey! Are you done with that paper? I'm on the toilet! The door should have been locked! How'd you get in here? Um... I... I have a key? Maybe? I don't know. Boy, you're stinky! Please... Leave. Okie dokie. Since we haven't done a kaiju critics in a while, why don't we do some quick reviews? Alright. Avatar! Liked it. Fern Gully meets the Matrix. Next. Clash of the Titans! Didn't like it. Hercules meets Xena and they rob each other of every last modicum of enjoyment that a fan could derive from their respective shows. Squeakwell! Liked it. Anthropomorphic Dryer Lint meets Chuck. Huzzah! Just like old times. Are you still pooping? Hey, I'm gonna read a fan mail! Ahem. Well, are you making the next Kaiju Critics? I want to see more adventures of Monster X and his partner in crime, Gabra, from an individual named Not Applicable. Right now, currently, this is the next one, from the last one, 107, following 106. Still doing all right in there, Monster X? Please go away! Can I at least come in and get my deodorant? All right. But, Dad, why do we have to visit an old folks' home? Because we are going to see a grandpa. I have a grandpa? Oh, didn't I tell you? Who's that little old man? Don't let his diminutive stature fool you. His name is Unusually Large Gorilla That Attacked New York in 1933. What? King Kong. I said his name is King Kong. Dad, what's that smell? He probably crapped his pants, son. Ah, here's your grandpa Gojira. Hey, Dad, how's it going? I'm hungry. <laughs> Who's that? This is your grandson, little Godzilla. Go ahead, son. Give the old man who you've never met before in your entire life, who also happens to be a close relative of yours, a non-awkward hug. No. Grandpa, in honor of meeting you for the very first time, I'd like to present you with a gift. It's an hourglass, just like the kind they used before now was invented. Dad, why is Grandpa freaking out? Because the device is pretty much alive. That hourglass is what killed your grandpa in the first place. Killed him? Yes, it was a device called the Oxygen Destroyer. But humans brought him back to life. Why? You see, son, humans have an utter disregard for everything. So they took his bones and turned him into a robot. And Grandpa just came back to life. Just, just like that. The sword was attached to the bone. That's an explanation I can live with. Eh? What happened? Don't worry, Dad. You just had a horrific flashback. Let's go somewhere nice for dinner. I want bad Thai. How about Palak Paneer? I want plain meat on plain toast. And I know just the place to get it. <laughs> My dentures get you away so I'm <laughs> Dad? He fought the war for us, son. Don't say anything. Dad, if Grandpa's a robot, why does he need to eat? This slop is too cold! Did somebody spit in it? That waitress is too short! Dad, I'm really scared. So am I, son. Dad, why do you have an accent and Grandpa doesn't? Hey, spend some time in the Bering Sea. I've got an idea! <laughs> Here you go, Dad. <laughs> 
We should all go fishing sometime. Then you can see why I have a lure. Get in a lure. Well, it was nice seeing you again, Dad. Dad, we don't ever have to go back and visit him again, do we? He's your grandpa, son. At the very least, you have to. Dad! Nurse Desteroe, would you mind playing a board game or something with your patients? I have to go polish my wealth. Who wants to play Bagel? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want pepperoni! Hey yo, what's the Tilio, Nami? Grandpa, a robotic monster who looks nothing like the Dora will attack the city and trample on everyone who tries to run away. Finally! I'll make sure King Caesar doesn't hear about it. No need for him to intervene, right? Don straight! <laughs> Let's see here. When a black mountain appears above the clouds, the monster will destroy the world. I have to stop ordering Chinese. These fortune cookies are getting more and more bizarre. They wouldn't trust fortune cookies if I were you. I opened one once that said you would become a creepy interloper. Ah, I proved that cookie wrong. Oh, look out the window. That cloud looks just like a black mountain. Saiko, your cookie was right. Do I know you? Yeah, mate. That's space titanium, all right. Hey, does that mean it's from outer space? Really, mate? Hey, why don't you look out the window and stare at Mount Fuji for a while, all right? Hi, I'm Mount Fuji. I'm liking every photo of Japan ever. Would you like to be my friend? I have facial hair. Therefore, I must be evil. Oops, I hear somebody without facial hair coming. My lack of facial hair makes my intentions quite ambiguous. It's a bizarre fortune, I'll give you that. But I don't know why you came to me. I'm actually a veterinarian. Fortune cookies are really just a hobby. Give me that fortune. No. Okay, just thought I'd ask. Bye. Cookie doo, just a rampaging. Might go to the deli later. I'm in the mood for a pickle sandwich. Oji, you decided to destroy the world and you didn't invite me? Wait, you're not Godzilla. Something's wrong. The guy in the drive-thru gave me a diet, Dr. Pepper. As I was saying, I'm Godzilla, your closest friend. I'm like 73% certain you aren't my best friend in the whole wide world, man. Dude, I can totally see one of your mechanical arms. What disguise? I ain't no doppelganger! Now give me your jaw! No, man, go away! Give it? I can't uh, go as away! As Stop as chasing me, man! Give it! Ah. I'm Godzilla! Hey, I'm here for the fight. Oh. See? My yellow spray is no different from you. I did not expect the real Godzilla to appear so soon. The Earth people must be confuzzled and a little turned on. <laughs> you shut your pie hole! I'm the real Godzilla! And I ain't under no alien control either! Double negative. Allow me to end this facade. Oh, whatever shall I do? Pound! Operation. We can't afford repairs. It's not in the budget. Uh, very well. Let's take over Planet X. We don't need full strength for that operation. Okie dokie! <laughs> Hey, son, I'd also like to introduce you to your aunt, Violante. Hi there! Nothing makes sense anymore.
The following commercial for Retro Causality Courier Incorporated was written and edited by the proprietor, Conan Antonio Manda. Oh boy, I would sure love to transport this bag of pizza to significant other, but I can't send it through the postal service because that would be illegal and gross. Ooh, ooh, what is that? Could it be? Look, it's Senior Amanda of Retro Causality Courier. Never mind that malarkey. Your bag of pizza will find your way. Post haste. Do you think I would let that hot mess umbrella? Charms be lucky. I'm not going nearly fast. Fast enough to get to customer significant other, I must increase my speed asymptotically to the light barrier. Away! <laughs> oh no, too close to see. Time dilation ruins my day. Solution, the future is now. Manipulating the curvature of space time allows me to go anywhere at any speed greater than C without paradox. An ancient civilization far away has created gates through time. Entrance is accelerated, exits are not. A wormhole succeeds where FDL fails. Whee! Causality violation, the past is now. I shall deliver the package before it was shipped. Well, hello, stranger. What can I do you for? A package from Significant Other, which he will be handing me in approximately 30 seconds. Here you go. A bag of pizza? Just what I always dreamed. A proposal of marriage, perhaps? Hee hee hee. Actually, it's Christmas. Uh-oh. You better get back to Kaiju Critic Studio so Monster X can give you the package that you just brought me. My past self exists in the near future. No worries for the present. And you too can have your packages delivered retroactively. But wait! What if your presence affects the near future and Monster X decides he doesn't want to send me this package after all? What would happen then? Your packages are completely insured against paradoxes at no extent. Charge. It's our guarantee. What about total universe collapse? Unfounded anti temporal manipulation propaganda. Why listen to Mr. Spock when you could listen to Mr. Sock? Virtual causality courier. We accept all major denominations of cash. God bless you, merry gentlemen. Let nothing you dismay. For Jesus Christ our Savior was born upon this day. To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. I think we did a lot better this year. I agree. What is it? Wrong speed, maybe. Tape must be finished. Now what? Change plan number three to number six. Right. We're safe enough. No human being can understand that. The monsters on Monster Island can understand it. What the hell, dude? What was that, man? Come here! Nice character design upgrade, man. Let me ask that. Oh, Dad! What we should think I understood that ruckus! Maybe you should try bacon! I should try bacon? He lives on the other side of Sassafras Island! You mean Monster Island? I mean something! Hi there, bacon! I introduced you my best friend and queerest. Hey, man! Nice to meet you! My dad, Grandpa Gojira. Where's the beef? My son, Little Godzilla. Yo! His arch nemesis, Gabra. Greetings! Gabra's heterosexual life partner, Monster X. Wait, what? Monster X's girlfriend and my sister, Ayulante. Hi there! In the floating sentient sphere named Radiant X7. <laughs> you must be here about this creature sounding ocean signal deep. I I will tell you a tale about super ancient Spain, the lawn of my birth. When I was a lad, I wanted the prettiest of pretty ponies. But to me, madre, she would not give me the prettiest of pretty ponies. She gave me the moneliest of moneliest stallions. To this day, my one goal in life is to possess the prettiest of pretty ponies and to brush her flaxen mane. And the action signal tape? I don't know. Maybe you should try him. No, 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 no. Not him. Who? Who should we try? What is he talking about? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Armor Mothra. Mr. Scott, eight to beam two. Infant Island. Aye, lad. I'll get you there in two shakes of a haggis loving Nessus fin. Domain. Take a seat! Ormor Mothra, we have traveled very far. Please tell us, 
What is this squeezy sounding they mean? Enough of these games! Tell us what it meant or I'll bring it down to absolute zero! I mean it! Destroy it! I'll transcend it, fade you! Please, no threats! It's clear that Armor Mothra simply doesn't know squat! No one questions Armor Mothra's sovereign skills! Well then? Um, it, it means, um, um... Uh, well, did you try asking Baron? I hear he dabbles in cryptology. <laughs> okay, at least one of us should have known that before we made this trip. <sighs> Mr. Scott, nine to beam back to Monster Island. Hi, lad. Well, first, I dabble in cryptozoology, not cryptology. Close enough! But I did manage to decode a little of the message. It has something to do with cockroaches and the cybernetic space chicken. I knew it. Oh, hello, my friends. I was just reading this book on how to become sexier. As you are probably already aware, such a book is useless to me. After all, what is infinity plus one? Let's not pretend. If you are a woman, you are already falling madly in love with me. And if you are a man, you are probably struggling with some confusing thoughts right about now. Do not be concerned. My machismo is as legendary as that of the other great Latin lovers. Don Juan Ricardo Montalban, Cesar Romero, his distant cousin Anthony, Desi Arnaz, Raul Montoya, and Rico Suave. You too can join our ranks. Observe. Me mum says I'm quite the looker. I've collected every episode of Star Trek in history from all six series, animated included. I even made a web series depicting the adventures of Christopher Pike's Enterprise. I call it Star Trek The Cage Reef visited. Look at this guy. So nerdy, so geeky. In his current state, he may never find a woman. But if I merely show him how to- What? Oh my, aren't you quite the looker? I'm a Star Trek fan myself. And I even wrote a fan fic about Captain Sulu aboard the Excelsior. Take a look at some of my sketches. My soulmate, I found you at long last. Wait a minute, what's Captain Sulu doing with his first officer? Okay, so perhaps I was wrong. Everyone has the potential to find someone who will love them for who they truly are. Nevertheless, I can still offer seven tips on what to do and what not to do when you find your significant other. Rule number one, never tell a woman that something is either too big or too small. Breaking this rule is a one-way trip to Mesprey City. Population you. Number two, remember to make eye contact. Never let your gaze fall any further than 10 degrees below this line of sight. Number three, Chocolate is a wonderful gift, but it also has certain euphoric properties. Too much could mean having to pick out a preschool much earlier than your 15-year plan would currently depict. Number four, never date a woman more than 20 years older than yourself. If she thinks beta will win the format wars, she might be a bit out of your demographic. Number five, if she wants to shave her head, let her. That chick from your rhythmics was hot. Number six, if she writes a slash fic about you and your best friend, Friend, you have crossed the threshold into what I like to call the runaway and don't look back zone. And finally, number seven, if she is the one to ask you out and ultimately the one to propose, keep her a lot less humiliation on your part. Trust me. Until next time, Don Ricardo Montalbegin, signing off. A prominent revolutionary transformed by a bolt of lightning. Early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and electrified. But Franklin, Redcoat Slayer. This, my editorial debut, will be my magnum opus. Hello again, my friends. Today I offer you some new tips on how to win over your lover's heart. 
The first thing on the itinerary we must discuss, attire. The following articles of clothing are completely out of the question for you to wear. Number one, fedora with feather. Number two, fedora with press tag. Number three, you know what, any kind of fedora, it does no matter. Number four, Fred Jones from Scooby-Doo Ascot. Number five, Rocky J. Squirrel, aka Rocky of Rocky and Bowingle fame goggles. Number six, Ross Perot t-shirt. And number seven, a loincloth. Now I will teach you how to speak softly into your lover's ear. Monster X and Biolante have allowed me to demonstrate. Biolante, I will speak sweet no things into your ear. Things that make absolutely no sense. The British monarchy. <laughs> Kesha's popularity. <laughs> compact fluorescent Lloyd bulbs. <laughs> the fantasy matches for <laughs> Sat AM's consolation. <laughs> no new Rogue Squadron games in like seven years. <laughs> and finally, Turducken. <laughs> All right, mister, that's quite enough. We want a girl's fun, why don't you? Follow these simple steps and you will do a okay, my friends. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a hot day with a classy lady. Until next time, Don Began, signing off. So that's when, like, I decided I didn't need to fight camera after all. Oh, that's fascinating. Please go on. I know, right? So anyway, that's when I decided to leave the world of professional diet wrestling and go back to school. For cause... Etology? Um, no. Cosmology. I was all like, yeah, I know what a Schwarzschild radius is, but you know, how can I apply that to everyday life? Just avoid black holes, I guess. Totally easier said than done. She's right, you know. You want a big blushy? You want a big blushy? I'll give you a big blushy. Ta-da! Hello there, my friend. Ah! And that's why I think all the Pokemon games should be classified as controlled substances. Hey, little Godzilla, guess what? 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 Drinks. Mm. Now you can't talk until I say your name. Or you buy me a Coke. Or you dress up like Groucho Marx and read the Communist Manifesto. Or is that Harpo Marx? Zeppo? No wait, it's Carl. I knew it was one of those. <laughs> Where did you go, little G? Well, hi there, son. What can I do for you? <laughs> Say... <laughs> lie... <laughs> nay... Say... Lie... Nay... Oh, say my name! Goji, come quick! Grandpa Gojira escaped! He's on his way to Atlantic City, man! He's gonna devour all of the smorgasbords! The smorgasbords, man! I'm sorry, son. I would say your name right now, but I can't. Even though I have enough time to explain why I can't say your name, nevertheless, I don't have any time to lose. <laughs> How can I help you, young man? Say bye, Monica, say bye, Monica. When everyone's around the pool, say maybe you sound so cool. Absolutely not. A monocle? He wants a monocle, yeah. It's this thing I'm holding in my eye. Then why do you have to? Don't be rude, Raiden. <laughs> Jinx! 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 26 hours later. <laughs> What's wrong, little Godzilla? Finally! No one would say my name! I couldn't talk for almost 520 hours! I think it's only been about 26 hours. Every hour of not talking is like 20 hours of talking. I don't think that that's a real phenomenon. But let this be a lesson to you all. A lesson to people who jinx with wild abandon. Or chicken butt without the slightest bit of empathy. Do you have a point? Oh yeah, I do. My point is this. Think twice, talk once. That's deep enough to make its way into a fortune cookie. Let's see here. Think twice, talk once. Psycho, that's deep enough to come from the mind of a gargantuan trifibian Draco lizard. Do I know you? Okay, mister, don't you think you've had enough? Don't you think I'll tell you what I've had enough?
Not really. Oh, okay then. I guess I'll wait outside for my son and his spikyback friend. Mr. Turtle Armadillo spikyback thing. I think he might be a type of ankylosaur. Whatever. Arr, this be me ship, Mr. Smog. My name is Hedora, so what'll I be doing? Arr, you'll be balancing me books. Yay, I look forward to working with you, sir. Do I get dental? Do you even have teeth? I used to. Hiya, Captain! Well, if it isn't me favorite scallywag. Crudgetize! I keep telling you, Captain Crunch, I be not, says I. I said crudgetize! This is the weirdest summer internship ever. Yeah, it's not even spring yet. No, what I mean is, I thought we were interning at a gift card manufacturer. This looks strangely like an airborne pirate ship, and it even has an extremely inappropriate name. What's wrong with the SS Bootylicious? Lads, I remember how confused I was during me first internship aboard the SS Lido deck. It was me job to make sure the pool was chlorinated. And when me made return from Newton. I mean pillaging. I mean purveying the fine folks of random part towns with the best darn gift cards from the seven seas. Arr. Me shipmates never had a cleaner swim. And you two will be learning the joys of pirating. I mean, uh, furnishing our patrons with gift cards. Arr. Really? What kind of gift cards are we serving? Gift cards to, um, Torrid, uh, Sunny Barbecue, Valvoline Instant Oil Change, uh, you know, those kind of places are. That's fine enough for me. Where are we selling gift cards today, Captain? Take a look at me map and be sure to ignore the compass that's strangely enough isn't pointing north. Does it point to what you desire most? If what I desire most is a random direction, boy, then I guess all broken compasses do that. Take a look! W marks the spot, her. Why, when we uncover that treasure, I mean, um, process that purchase order or something, then we'll divide the booty several ways, her. Um, I was looking at your books, and I noticed a lot of the profits are logged under buried treasure. Pay no heed, boy. Now get cracking. Me thinks we be needing to say those books balance better than Acrobaticus, the giant monster of unusually talented balancing horror. Okay, but what about these entries that just say Looted port. You be asking too many questions. Arr, like this lad, do I? Says I. Arr, me things. Arr. Arr, 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 Arr. Now crunch Did we find the treasure, lads? I think we uncovered something. It appears to be the complete work of Yuri Norstein. Tale of Tales, Hedgehog in the Fog, 47 seconds of unfinished overcoat footage. A fine haul, lads. Let's go and get a 15 minute oil change. It's on me. Arr. Cheers, me fine mates. I brought Cornish pasties. Southern England's answer to the calzone. This is bound to be the finest blokes only day ever. You're ruining the vibe with your lack of manliness, my friend. All of the girlfriends are away doing unmanly things on their girls' day out. We must shed our doily like lily membranes of girliness and flex a peck or two. If you understood that string of insanity, you're doing much better than I. But I love to hang out with my favorite bird. We all do, but today is the day for our very own sausage fest. You you did bring the sausage, right, Monster X? Huh? Yeah, it's in the fridge. I guess I just don't understand. Don't you see? The girls are probably doing something really girly right now. Like prancing through the daisies. Hi, nothing, Jamie. <laughs> Your turn, Lante. With pleasure. Or buying frilly little dresses. Let's, like, get an Xbox. 360 girls. When's Gears of War 3 coming out, kid? To Wikipedia. And they're probably eating quiche and light pastries. Oh my, they're baking blasted nachos. I hear these the dog's bollocks. It is like totally on. In fact, it sounds so lame. I think I'll do some of it right now. You know, just to make fun of it. Huge and strong and monstrous and pretty. The kaiju from super ancient Spain goes a trampling and when he tramples each one he Basses goes, ooh! What just happened? Beats the bloody Yorkshire pudding out of me. Hey, would you like to watch me favorite Star Trek episode? Spock's brain? You took the words right out of me gob. Brain, brain and, and brain. brain. What, what is brain? brain? Hey, let's have some bacon blasted nachos to go with, eh? Bacon blasted nachos? After Labor Day? It's so is after some Labor Day, and I hear they're the dog's bollocks. Where are you going? I've got a town to save. Well, that sounds like an interesting side plot that we'll probably never know anything about. So, you like to begin weight training, eh? Yeah, I just want you to tell me about the medical basics, you know? Like dietary requirements and vitamin supplements. I see. Well, let me recommend you my newest book on the subject. So you want to take on Frieza, a guide to becoming ridiculously strong. It pleases me to know that we're on the same page.
Why should I tie myself down? I'm young. I don't need a bowling chain. I don't agree. Now here's how I see it. Hey, are you guys talking about marriage? N not with each other, I mean, but you know, with your respective girlfriends. Oh, that was close. No, I was just considering buying a bowling chain. But you know, it's actually not a great idea when you think about it. But on the subject of marriage, I don't know. But maybe someday when it's right, I'll pop the question, but get a sharp. And maybe someday me and Millennium Gigon will have our very own ceremony, complete with beautiful floral arrangements, and Mr. Michael Mc. Donald, what about you and Biolante? Oh, we're already married. And we have a kid. Jaw drop. When did this happen? We got married about a year ago. And the kid came last week. Why do you look so surprised? Oh, look, here they come. Just taking our kid out for a walk. Who are those audacious enough to stare at baby? These are my friends. This is Bagan. Most pleased to meet you. And Gigan72. Yeah, not age. These aren't who you promised to show me. These aren't them at all. Remember our agreement, Dad? Daddy, Daddy, show me the wonders of the world. Well, there's the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Lighthouse of Alexandria, the Great Pyramid of Giza. No, no, what I mean is show me your seat of government. Or the whole planet? Well, I guess we could go to the next Bilderberg Conference. Or would you prefer to visit a G7 meeting? Not your creepy puppeteers that lurk in the shadows. Just take me to the leader of this island. All right. I could take you to the mayor of Monster Island. That would be Splendid. Ah, 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 ah. You promised, Daddy. Hold your horses there, Celebi. Celebi? Where did you get a name like that? Um. I think we should name her after my great aunt Celery. Well, I think we should name her after my aunt B. Ah, a portmanteau. Yes, yes, a pimento loaf, whatever. Show me the seat of your island government, or there will be dire consequences, up to and including more frequent changings for baby. All right, don't get your precocious little voice all in a tizzy. Scotty to the mayor's office. <laughs> That teleporter was fun. Heisenberg can just go eat a hamburger. Well, hi there. I'm the mayor. My name is Jimmy Kamakaris, peanut farmer, former president, and a believer. After all, I am a praying mantis. Yo, step down and give me control of Monster Island. I command it. Now, you're a sweet kid. Tell you what, why don't I give you a peanut butter cup and you can have your picture taken with a Nobel Prize winner? Me. Is she old enough for a peanut butter cup yet? You don't realize just how old I am. Nor do you realize what my true intentions are. Dr. Baragon says she's the equivalent of a four-year-old with the mind of a 35-year-old megalomaniac. How that happened in a week's time, I'm not sure. But I think a peanut butter cup would be okay. No, I don't want a peanut butter cup. I wish to rule you all. Nom, nom, nom. Oh, this is quite delicious. Need for domination, subsiding. No, I'm out to reveal whole truth. Ah, mommy... Daddy, you're not married, and I'm not your daughter. That explains why I don't remember your conception. I have used my psychic powers to fool you into this whole charade. But you guys are super nice. Would you be up for adopting a sweet little girl like me? Sure. Eh, why not? Excellent. The second stage of my exquisitely brilliant plan is in full effect. You know, you should really try thinking to yourself more often. Duly noted. Now silence! I mean, um, take me to the circus, daddy! I would uh, like to see the lions and tigers. Okie dokie. Yes, folks, the celebrated Acrobaticus is performing his feats on this fine Saturday. Oh, wait, his mask fell off. Why, it's none other than our illustrious mayor, Jimmy Kamakaris. Is there anything he can't do? I knew it all along. Sure you did. I love you like a sister. Fresh meat. I mean, new guests are about to arrive on Fantasy Archipelago. Have you made all of the necessary arrangements? Oh, of the ironic wish algorithms have been programmed into the wish machine! Remember, don't tell anyone about the crashed wish machine that we uncovered in the deserts of New Mexico. It must be kept secret. Who are our guests today, boss? 
Our first guest is a beauty, horror of the sky. He doesn't look so horrific. Wait, horror of the sky? Oh, you see, he desires most to become a crewman aboard an airborne pirate ship. And we shall make it happen. He did pay the fee, right, Tutelios? What? Make it mine? As you requested, sir. Don't you find it odd that we still use mine when the Japanese abandoned their form of currency in the 19th century? Hello, charms. Have you prepared the ship? Has Captain Patra agreed to lend us his vessel, Tutelios? Wish machine, see what you can do about getting him a captain with almost a bird-like grace. What could go wrong? Yeah. Who's blind? A kiwi? And he's been texting. Wait a minute. Kiwis can't fly? Kiwis can't fly? The critic will return after these messages. Ah, come on, that kiwi ship fallen from the sky, Mr. Rourke. My name is Big. Mayday! 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 Our ship's falling out of the sky! Wait a minute! Dismiss me crew for the weekend, did I? Arr, oh, wait a second. Yarr! Captain, I'm gonna work through the weekend. I've got some catching up to do. Um, okay, whatever. Arr. You're not planning to loan the ship out to some eccentric billionaire who's out to teach a lesson to his well-paying customers, are you? I'll take that as a no. If only I listened to the lad instead of finishing that scurvy crossword puzzle. <laughs> the lesson has been learned. The lesson? What lesson? We never even got to the lesson. The lesson has been learned. I'm nauseous. I'm nauseous. I'm nauseous. Well, that was a hoot and a half. But may I remind you that I did pay for the whole weekend? Arr, take ye aboard will I free a charge, says I. Arr, me thinks, arr. Smashing. Sir, do you have a Lido deck, old boy? Me thinks we'll be getting along just fine, lad. Arr. Millennium Gigant. I'd like to play World of Warcraft for a whole weekend without having to use the loo. Tutalios, see if you can find me a catheter. Sure thing, boss! What's happening down there? What's that on the screen? Glowy fins! Glowy fins! Well, hi there, Satsuma. How's it going? Ah! Ah! Though I'm short and young, I am prepared to battle you to prepare to Japan. Uh, where are you going? Oh, me, oh, my. Looks like I got my work cut out for me. Let's you me dance, Goji. Um, um. Goji, you do know we're trying to shoot a movie here, right, man? Hello? Hello, man? Peculiar tune, eh? Hey, what? It makes me want to ride a dinosaur. <laughs> yes. But do you have to leave tonight? Yeah, I've really gotta be at that meeting in Seoul by morning. Merger can't wait on me now, can it? Now you know full well that I have no clue whether it can or can't. At any rate, I'm gonna need you to put Celebi to bed tonight. Fear me! Can't you stay just a little longer? Oh, she won't bite. Yes, I will. And I will draw whatever liquid flows through your cosmic veins, Daddy. Cosmic veins. Night! Okie dokie. <laughs> Daddy's completely scared out of his wits. <laughs> well, let's get in our jam jams and I'll read your story before bedtime. Correction! I will continue to wear my signature flower tutu. Of horror! And you will not read me a story, Daddy. You will make one up. One where I am the heroine and all shall tremble. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna need some help on this one. Thank you for calling Gabby's. Our hours of operation are... It's me! Henry Kissinger? No! Uh, could you come over and help me tuck in Celebi? Who? You know, the maniacal psychic child that Lante and I adopted last month. Oh, Celebi! Why did you say so? I'll be right over. PK Teleport Alpha! Oh, 
Very well, I'll just call a cab. Tell me more, Daddy, tell me more. And so the sweet little girl wanted to be a princess. No, she did it. She wanted to become an empress, complete with a fanatically devoted royal guard draped in crimson. As she sat in front of a spiderweb-like viewport, she proclaimed haughtily, Everything that has transpired has done so according to my design. Your friends up there on the sanctuary moon are walking into a trap, as is your rebel fleet. It was I who allowed the Alliance to know the location of the shielded generator, and my most loyal lackey will declare, it is pointless to resist. And at that point, she knew full well that the Ewoks could pose a threat, so the genre-savvy Empress had them teleported to the nearest Build-A-Bear workshop, where they fetched $14.95 apiece. Wicket was the first to sell, and Chief Chirpa the last and then peace was restored to the galaxy. Okay, that was unendingly creepy. Now why don't we go to bed? Water. Water? No, water! Water! I'd like a glass of water, Daddy! Mineral water with a single ice cube! Any more and there will be tantrums! Only tantrums there shall be! Any less and there will be consequences beyond your wildest reckoning! Oh, thank goodness. Okay, I didn't know what you wanted me to bring, so I brought a whole bunch of R-rated movies. What? Did I say R? I meant G. I always get those two mixed up. By the way, I think I might have lent your Aunt B some questionable material. Yeah, she's seen worse. Hey, you look a little different. I had my last reconstructive surgery recently. In the future, I'll try not to step on tails. Or bully people at all, for that matter. Nice. Anyway, what movies did you bring? I brought a crossover Pixar DreamWorks film. Let's see here. Puss in Boots versus Buzz Lightyear. That's a potential classic. Is that Celebi? Is that a patronizing adult? Yes. Yes, it is. Nobody patronizes Celebi. I mean, Celebi. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for, oh, I'm sleepy, losing consciousness, exhausted daily energy supply. No, must find. Stuffed animal hammock. Cannot sleep without you. Wanky. Uh. Mm. She's out like a light! How about you and me get our Puss in Boots versus Buzz Lightyear on? Sounds like a plan to me. Hey, deckhand! Actually, I'm the resident CPA. Oh, sorry about that. How soon will we be in Seoul? I'll ask the cat. Yeah. Cat One of our passengers wants to know how soon we'll arrive in Seoul. I was under the impression that we were on our way to Singapore. Arr, best me, Smuggy. A passenger, have we? Arr, knew we shouldn't have stopped at that commercial airport for a fuel and just asking for a misinterpretation of our services, were we? Arr. Oh, well, take a detour, then we will, says I. Arr. Hoist the mainsail and weigh anchor. Tell the crow we'll be eating kimchi tonight, Arr. Okie dokie. Hello! We're the Kaiju Critics! Smooth with two Ks because we ran out of seas! Hey, Monster X, why are we talking like this? Because they want the Kaiju Critics back, so why not talk like we did when the Kaiju Critics first began? Because it's too strenuous! Can we stop now? Yeah, sure. If that's better. Anyway, today we're going to be reviewing Pirates of the Caribbean 4 on Stranger Tides. And here's an official clip! The ship is ours! Yeah! Hey, I'm a pirate! Gentlemen! Whoa! I be placed in a bewilderment. There I were, working on that scurvy crossword puzzle. And on a sudden came upon a hard one, did I? Looking for a six-letter word that means an insurrection at sea. What be that, me favorite scallywag? Mutiny cap! Arr, that be the one! Carry on with whatever you were doing, me hearties, arr. Yarr. That's an official clip. Maybe? At any rate, I'd say this movie was okay. Probably my third favorite. Two pegged legs out of a possible four. As for me, this one's my new favorite. Four eye patches out of a possible five. Maybe even four and a half. So take that, X-Ray. X-Ray? Do you like it? It's your new nickname. Like if your name were Monster T, I'd call you T-Bone. And if your name were Monster G, I'd call you G-String. Okay, that's about all the time we have. Thanks for tuning in. And even if you won't 
don't say it, I will. This is X-Ray and Gabra signing off. Hey! Let's read a fan mail. Let's see here. A gentleman by the name of Sergeant 16 Bit writes, I checked the Easter eggs of all of the dunes, and Dinosaur Dog hasn't shown up in at least months. Where is he? Uh, here? Yeah. Me neither. I haven't a clue either. Ah! Sorry we couldn't help you, Sergeant. Perhaps we'll do better next time. This is X-Ray signing up. Oh, great, now I'm doing it. Hey, guess what? What? I'm naked! Ah! Hello! We're the Kaiju Critics! Spelled with two Ks because I'm still naked! Anyway, today Gabber's going to run the show. Yeah. And with that vote of confidence, I'm pleased to announce that we're going to be reviewing Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Ah, oh, the Steven Spielberg classic from 1977. You know, to be honest, I've never actually seen the film. Neither have I, but that doesn't matter. Because I'm going to be reviewing actual close encounters of the third kind. What? Let's start with the Kelly Hopkinsville encounter of 1955. Two thumbs up. Next up is the close encounter of Cusack from 1967. Another winner. The Reverend William Booth Gill sighting of 1959. Totally obscure, but totally awesome. Don't you see, X-Ray? Please stop calling me that. Righto! Don't you see, X-Wing? X-Wing? What kind of nickname is that? Don't you see? There is a ton of evidence to indicate that we are not alone in this universe. Well, duh. Duh? If you'll recall, I come from outer space. Oh, yeah! That is pretty common knowledge, isn't it? Yep. So I don't need to present you with any proof? Nope. All right, man. Looks like I won't be needing your help to convince X-Wing after all. Yeah, he's always like that. And trust me, you're not the first one to notice. Who's that? Oh, that's my friend, Mr. Poupon. He's a gray. Gray Poupon. Mais oui. He just thought projected that he likes you, and he wants to offer you a spin in one of his tricked out rides. You can choose from his sport model saucer, his Belgian style black triangle, his flying chevron, his diamond shaped ship, there's a tongue twister for you, his flying oval, or his cigar shaped craft. He just wanted me to let you know that even though he has a cigar-shaped craft, he doesn't smoke. Quite bad for your health, you know. Why does he have so many UFOs? Dude, this gray is like the Jay Leno of Zeta Reticuli. And to him, they're identified flying objects. IFOs. Quaint. I'll take the chevron out for a spin. If he doesn't mind, of course. He's cool with it. Looks like we have a Phoenix Lights fan on our hands, don't we, Mr. Poupon? He either just laughed, or he inquired where he might be able to pick up 223 grams of unpentium. Stable isotope, of course. Either way, we're off! These controls are so exotic, I can't even find the radio. Oh, wait, here it is. Wait a second, why do you only have AM? Mr. Poupon likes to listen to Art Bell in the Golden Oldies. Why would he need anything else? He also indicated that he doesn't want to be a backseat driver, but he does want you to know that you've had your directionals on for at least three light years. Yeah. But he says all things considered, you're doing great. Sweet. I like to rub my talon-like fingers through your gossamer hair.
One, two, three. Previously on Toho Kingdom Tunes, with so many couples now entwined in serious relationships, who will be the first to tie the knot? Will it be Biolante and Monster X? What do you think, X-Wing? Oh, now you're calling me that! Millennium Gargan and Showa Gargan! Set course for Mariage! Maximum warp! Steady as she goes. Get her sharp and begging! Are you, like, ready for a leash? Baby? No one can tame me. Or will it be a pair of unknowns, a dark horse couple emerging from the very fringes of Toho Kingdom to upset the developing romantic subplots of season 5? Will this mysterious duo prove that a great love has been ready to blossom all this time? Let's watch and find out. The Toho Kingdom 2 season finale starts now. Finally! After five years I've cornered you. You're not going anywhere, you creepy little bug. Prepare to be squishified. Oh. Hmm? Where have you been all my life, my little dewdrop? Why do we kid ourselves with such an endless chase, my candy apple? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, my gem. Love means never having to say you're sorry, my apple dumpling. I don't think anyone agrees with that, my cherry blossom. Yes, but it sounded like the thing to say, my pumpkin pie. We are perfect for one another, no? Yes, after all, our names both have the same number of letters, my pet. Ten, the number of love. And what a perfect coincidence, you're a perfect ten. As am I. As am I. Go on, Pompachi. Only Spanish can truly represent my feelings. Besame mucho, el amor de mi alma. Yo quiero Taco Bell, mi arroz con pollo. Are you ready for that wonderful journey of holy matrimony, my cherry's jubilee? Let us wed in the chapel of love, my Dixie cup. Are you happy to live under the same roof, my creme brulee? Our house will be a very, very, very fine house, my everything, with two cats in the yard. Are you prepared for me to have your children, my white diamond truffle? Yes, a thousand times yes. So we'll have enough room, I'll buy us a Chrysler just as big as a whale. And it's about to set sail. Wait, would our children's skeletons be on the outside or the inside, my quiche Lorraine? Only time will tell, my golden summer. Then, what is your answer, my wild honey pie? Wouldst thou give me thine raptorial foreleg in marriage? I will! Do you say to any sweet kids take each other to be your lovely wedded significant others? Sure! I do. I now pronounce you as husband and wife, or wife and husband if you so choose, and mantle top you make is the bride. Do 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 Fan mail! A gentleman by the name of Doomgiver writes... Let us wait it together, my tasty cake. Let's, my sussy special. Monster X and Gabra. I found a new movie Super 8 the other day and thought it was pretty good for an Area 51 type film. I was hoping you two could share your thoughts on the film. Thanks! Smiley face. We really weren't planning on seeing Super 8, so we really can't review it. But we can review the Super 8 motel chain. <laughs> when it comes to Super 8, you can expect one thing, a nice room at a reasonable price. Yeah! And there's this one Super 8 motel in Fairmont, Minnesota that treated us really nice. It's right off I-90. Throw them some business. Hey, listen to this, Fooj. I will show you Monster Zero. Hey, look! It's King Ghidorah. Can't you just drive it away? If you have an idea how to do it, won't you tell us? Well, I don't know about you, Fuge, but I got an idea. Lay it on me, Glenn. Okay, they're these humane mousetraps back on Earth. I think they're called mouse cubes. Cubes, eh? Yeah, but they really aren't cubes. They're actually right rectangular prisms. Like a cuboid. That's right, old bunny. You see, the door is just slightly longer than the entrance, and it bends inward. So the mouse gets in all right, but it can't get out. Not enough room for the door to swing back. Are you writing this down, controller? This is gold. Or do you water? I don't think you understand. 
understand. We simply wish to borrow from you on Earth the Monster 01 and Monster 02, Godzilla and Rodan. Nah, you don't need them, we can handle this. Now about those mouse cubes. Yeah, all we need is one of the mouse cubes. You just gotta scale it up to size a bit, controller. Gentlemen, I assure you, we have pursued every alternative. The only remaining option is the Oxygen Destroyer. Yeah, that little gem that Serenzawa was working on some time back. You think you can get in touch with him? Sure thing, he's an old friend. Boy, we haven't spoken in years. Can I borrow this phone controller? Okay, thanks. Gentlemen, I, I understand what you're trying Sarazawa. to do. And really? although I am very thanks. grateful, he passed away. Serenzawa, are you kidding me? How'd it happen? Killed himself with his own Oxygen Destroyer. Apparently he took out the first Godzilla in the process. Something about unrequited love. Well, that's a fine hill of beans, call a guy, and it turns out he went and killed himself over some dame. Please, time is of the essence. I've got it, Fuji. This'll do it for sure. Marmalade. Marmalade controller, are you paying attention? All we have to do is offer King Gita a gigantic jar of marmalade. When his heads get stuck in the jar, you have one of your saucers transported to a holding cell in the asteroid belt. And here's the kicker. The holding cell is a giant mouse cube. Fits like a glove donut controller. I must insist. Godzilla and Rodan are the only solution. If Earth will cooperate, we are prepared to pay her. Your medical men on Earth have not yet achieved a cure for the rocking pneumonia and the boogie woogie flu. Is that correct? We are prepared, therefore, to give you a medical drug that will cure these serious conditions. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we'll do that. We'll give you Godzilla and Rodan, and then you'll end up using them against us. How, how did you know? Come on, this is 1960X. Give us a little credit, controller. Wait a second, what if we shrink Ghidorah? Now why didn't I think of that? You're brilliant, Fuge. What's the plan? First, we'll need to get in touch with Rick Moranis. Wait a second, what if we turn Ghidorah into chocolate? Now why didn't I think of that? You're brilliant, Fuge. What's the plan? First, we'll need to get in touch with Majin Buu. We have to go now, controller. We have a lunch date with my sister and her boyfriend. Wormhole activate. That didn't quite go as planned. Hey, foo, jam scream, will ya? I got a date. But I just said I was meeting my sister here. Wait, you've got a date? With a Japanese girl? <laughs> Not the wrong kind, I hope. Name's Gogo Yubari. You know her? I'd pass on that one if I were you. Sure thing, old buddy. You know best. Besides, I met this cute little thing on Planet X. There were women up there? Yeah, and they all look alike, too. You know what that means. I think my chances are A-OK -okay that at least one of them won't run at the first sight of my Nicolas Cage memorabilia. Just look at this. Glenn, that's the Declaration of Independence. I'll give it back. When I'm done. When did you find time to check out Girls on Planet X? Remember when you were in the can? I've got a pee. Can I use your bathroom controller? No, you may not. Hey, thanks. See, I snuck into one of the hydrogen oxide plants and met a whole bunch of beautiful dames. Wait, why would they have an H2O plant? Come to think of it, I think Planet X might be very short of water. What makes you think that? Things. Hey, controller, I'm parched. This Dixie Cup H2O just ain't doing it for me. Please, sir, I want some more. Mr. Olga, I beg your pardon, sir. Astronaut Glenn has asked for more. For more? Compose yourself, controller, and answer me distinctly. Do I understand that he asked for more? After he had drunk the water allotted by the dietary? He did, sir. Point taken. Your sister's taking a sweet time, huh? She's always late. We've been here the whole time. Well, if it isn't my dear unsoiled dove of a sister, the very essence of chaste purity. Oh yeah, and her amphibious suitor. Shouldn't you be trying to find the rainbow connection or something? I am not Kermit the Frog. I am Tatsuo Terry, inventor of non-lethal sonic weaponry. For children! Boy, oh boy, it's not easy being green. I mean, it's not easy finding soy cheese without casein. Brother, do you still go out in public in full uniform? A real astronaut dies with his oxygen helmet on, right, Glenn? Which is somewhat ironic if you think about it, but speak for yourself, I'm going commando. Not exactly full uniform, right, old buddy? Ha! I'm still wearing my maximum absorbency garment. Y you do know you're supposed to get your mag changed frequently, right, Fuge? Yes, because doing otherwise would be wrong. And Grandma's little baby knows how to use the potty. Well, I just lost my appetite. How about you, love bites? I could go for some mousse. Yeah, you're about the only one left in this restaurant. Hey, Terry, I heard you sold one of your inventions. Have they paid you yet? I want dollars and cents, Terry. Only a down payment of 500 grand. That's what I thought. 
Terry, I think a great deal of my sister. So I'm giving you five seconds to commit seppuku. Okay. That's a bit harsh, don't you think, Fuji? Hey, at least you didn't say it. So, what do you think, Terry? Reasonable option? I guess so. Why are you so mean to him? You know what? We have mutual trust. What do you think, Glenn? Doesn't that count for something? I think so mutual trust is a beautiful thing. Like a box of just for men on a Friday night. Or an autographed photo of Ms. Kumi Mizuno. Oh, Glenn, mutual trust won't buy groceries. Yes, it will. I knew this couple one time. They had mutual trust out the wazoo. They walk into a Piggly Wiggly and tell the manager, and they get two boxes of P.F. Chang's home menu right from the freezer aisle. That sounds like a grocery to me, old buddy. You're fighting me. You always agree with the girls. No, I just never agree with you. It's not my fault that you're always fighting with girls. Now, if you'll excuse me, Planet X Female Unit 037 awaits, a.k.a. Mizunamikawa. The enemy is very powerful. You better do something spectacular. Just don't join the RDA's private security force. You ain't gonna impress nobody killing Navi. Excuse me. Gentlemen, please forgive my intrusion, but you kind of left me hanging. About Godzilla and Rodan. Hey. We'll get back to you. That's probably a no. Hey everybody, who wants to go to Lake Myogen for a day trip? Sure! sure. What do you mean Lake Myogen? Hey, what's that? Fancy meeting you here! Likewise! What do you make of that? Yeah, they were here already. You remember giving them permission to take our monsters? I don't remember giving them permission. I think I will skip the usual charade and simply declare Earth a colony of Planet X. May I introduce to you your new colonial commander? I will be tough but fair. I have many infrastructure projects in mind, including updates to the Chicago Skyway. We shall collect fresh water for our own use and redistribute the excess around the globe. We also have an aromatic beverage that we will export to Colony 03, aka Earth. It is called Key, and we would like everyone to try some. Our soldiers are now distributing key cups to the crowd, and the crowd is now remarking about the mild astringency, which they find delightfully superior to their local equivalents. I wish we could show this to the audience at home. They are now returning the key cups, and the camera is about to switch views to astronaut Glenn. Though there will be no sign that he ever consumed our delicious beverage, he will remark, That was sure tasty stuff, Controller. It's like a mix of constant comic green tea and gray all mixed into one. My head's buzzing from the caffeine, and now I seem to be crashing. Oh, I sleep now. <gasps> there is one catch, however. We will require our color colonists to pay a key tax. It is a very minimal fee to cover the administrative costs that our provincial government may incur on this planet. Nobody. But nobody levies a modest tax on a non-essential commodity and gets away with it on this planet. You hear that, Controller George the Third? Who told you my full name? You found my Facebook page, didn't you? I told them. Oh, Controller, you must understand. I've fallen for this earthling <sighs> plan and given away many of our secrets. He must have told Fuji and the others. You must try to understand. Glenn is like John Wayne and Marlon Brando all mixed into one. Did you tell them about my littlest pet shop collection? They even know about the field of daffodils, the very source of our power. And I might have slipped and told them about our weakness to shrill high-pitched sounds, but I can't remember. What? What, what was that about shrill sounds? Oh yeah, she did mention something about that. Terry, quick! Use the Lady God alum to subdue these interplanetary conquistadors. But they're the ones I sold the prototype to. Well, somebody do something. Go, Nami! People of Planet X, listen to my dissonance. Feel the sting inside your head, the ever-increasing annoyance. I want to jump for joy like the fallen rising tide. This song's like rubbing your brain with sodium hydroxide. It's too painful, too incredibly piercing. We'll escape, we'll escape into the future, into that dimension we've never seen. All of you, join me in escape. Activate the time machine. Yay! So what happened exactly? I'm not too sure, but why do I have the feeling that I've had significantly less to do than usual? Hey Namikawa, how about you and me tying the knot, eh? Oh Glenn, there is nothing I would want more. You know I can get any more of that key?
I now name you Female Unit 037, the new controller regnant of Planet X. And you, Astronaut Glenn, will be controller consort. Well, the real question is who wears the pants? She rules you have a title. So to answer your question, she quote unquote wears the pants. Make me a sandwich, baby. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Celebi, can I talk to Mr. X? Dad wants me to give him back the toupee that he borrowed. Mom doesn't like it very much, and Grandpa keeps mistaking him for Pat Sajak. I'd like to buy a fowl! I keep telling you, you've already bought them all. I'd like to solve the puzzle, then. It's Ariously, isn't it? Yes, how did you- Son, I've watched a lot of Wheel of Fortune in my time. A lot. <laughs> Mommy and Daddy are busy talking about opening up their cafe again. Oh, do they do that often? What do they say when they talk about it? How should I know? It's always Land of the Rising Sun when they talk about their blooming cafe. <笑>ああ、もちろん。もちろん。<笑> <キムジより、コバルトブルーか何かね、なめるで。でも、キムジの菓子くは、いいぜ。笑> <笑> <laughs> Just give me the toupee, I'll take care of it. Okie dokie. I do look like Pat Sajak. Okay, the category is popular media. Destroyer, let's say R-S-T-L-N-E. Okay, we need three more consonants and a vowel. Go! C, M, B, and O. And you've solved the puzzle. Monster Lobster Corner? What's that? I guess I'll never know. Unless I were to click an invisible visible button located somewhere on the screen. Hello there, charms. Welcome to Monster Lobster Corner, Connecticut's oldest radio station devoted solely to marine kaiju. Our guest today is Shankaros, and he's going to treat us with his Gary Newman impression. That's kind of obscure, isn't it? <laughs> Here under sea, with the greatest of ease, as quiet as a mouse, a prodigious sea louse. That's me, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me to a T. Look at me now, exsanguinating a cow. <laughs> and that's all the time we have. Are you ready for a nice road trip, Celebi, Whittle, Celebi, Whittle, Whittle? Oh, you're so cute! I just want to rip off my own head and play basketball with it! Doesn't she need a car seat? If she were human, yes, but I assume she can teleport out of danger if need be. Yep. So, Badlands National Park, eh? Yep, one of the many natural wonders of the West, and the only tourist attraction in South Dakota that doesn't annoy me! What about 1880 Town? Yeah, what about 1880 Town? Hey, Celebi, are you gonna listen to your iPod at all? I would listen to music, Mummy, but you do always ruin every song that I like! Joan was quizzical, studied bad the physical science in the home. You know, it's too bad that song is about a vicious serial killer. No! Timothy, Timothy, where on earth did you go? You know, it's too bad that song is about cannibalism. No! Take the last train to Clarksville and I'll meet you at the station. You, you know, know, it's too bad that, that song is about, about the, the Vietnam, Vietnam War. No! Even the monkeys betrayed me. The monkeys. We just crossed the border from Minnesota into South Dakota. Yay! Yay. Hey, look, a billboard for Waldrug. Let's count them all, shall we? That's one. A really long time later. That's 4,798. Wow, and we're still east of Mitchell. How many of those things are there? These people put south of the border to shame. And Pedro really doesn't need any help in that area. All these interstate highway jokes are making me hungry. So hungry. Can we stop? at a drive-thru. Well, we're coming up on Mitchell. Would you like to go to Arby's? That would be adequate. Hey, was that a sign for the Corn Palace? And we're skipping over this exit? But, Daddy, 
today I'm hungry. I packed some sandwiches just in case of a situation like this. Peanut butter and sardines? My favorite. Nom, nom, nom. Hey, we're finally here. Did that sign just say beware rattlesnakes? Oh, don't worry. Psychic type is super effective against poison type. You can take them. Again. Come quick, everyone. I have something to show you. No, silly. Not that way. This way. I came into my room today, and I noticed a glowing object on the ceiling. We don't know where it came from. It just showed up one night. Word. But I think it may be some form of bioluminescent platypus, latching itself onto the very slab of stuff under which I do my business. No, not that business. Just the regular business. I called in an expert to confirm. Yeah, I think what you got here is a lot fixture. I wasn't convinced, of course, so I got a second opinion. That, I would say, is most likely a lot fixture. Such a claim has been made before. How can that do? I haven't the slightest clue how to answer that. With such malarkey brandished about like a belligerent shillelagh, there was only one thing to do. Challenge it to a fight. I challenge it to a fight. Lucky for Platypie existence wide, it prevailed. That's when I was absolutely convinced that it wasn't a light fixture, so I called in my best insectal friend in the whole wide world for assistance. Why did you call me back? I was almost to the car. My armored car? Because you're my best mothy friend in the whole wide Virgo supercluster. We stick together through thick and thin. Don't you remember Soy Lecithin camp? Just before we started third and a half grade? I remember lots of stuff, not least of which is our obvious and very close Friendship <laughs> oh, that not a single viewer of Toho Kingdom Tunes could have possibly missed. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson is my other friend. You don't mess with him, and nobody messes with me. Conan Antonio Menda. So we went to see the glowing object again, but this time here was the one place it wasn't. Some say it never were. Others were to never say. But in the end, we all learned a very valuable lesson that we should always check the camcorder we use to record ourselves sleeping. I am now going to prove that I can eat an entire Reuben sandwich in under 25 minutes. Whoops, wrong tape. A bioluminescent platypus. I was right. A monotreme to the extreme. Now do you trust my instincts? My best lepidopter and friend in the whole wide multiverse? Manda, I will never underestimate you again, unless it proves comedically beneficial to the situation. <laughs> uh. Maybe I'm born with it. Maybe it's monitoring. Hello! Where the- Shut up! 2K's be trippin'! Anyway, I've discovered YouTube! And I love Neon Cat! Behold, Neon Dutalios! What? <laughs> I hope you realize that I'll never be able to look at rainbow stars faster than light travel, Dutalios, or Glenn Close the same way again. Then my work here is done. People who come from far and wide know me as little Dutalios. I can now apparently fly and leave a trail of pretty rainbows. The stars shine as I speed by at many times see while I wiggle my toes. My favorite cartoon of all time is hoodwinked with the lovely Glenn Close. Dutalios and the trails of rainbows and I'm wiggling my toes and the lovely Glenn Close. A dose in my nose of a rose from a lose and some crows with a hose I suppose someone knows. A show about yo-yos with some bows speakers pros and I chose how it goes and it sews my new clothes. Lovely Glenn Close and I'm wiggling my toes and the trails of rainbows and Dutalios! Ha! Hey, Grandpa, where do you keep the mayonnaise? What was that? You want to know our origin story, eh? Sure. Well, it all starts with Operation Crossroads back in 46. Not Operation Castle in 54 like your money thought. I looked a lot like you in those days. Your dad takes after your grandma. Anyway, we didn't wear clothes back in my day. Although I did sport a pair of undies. Clean as a whistle, except round back. Is Grandma still alive? Yes, and we're happily married. Anyway, there I was. And then, boom! And you tended to quite the looker, along with other 
members of our kind have made their home in and around Bikini at Hall. Then your dad hatched. Hi! So eight years came and went, and by that time it was the 50s. Now remember, these were the days before Dr. Phil, so parenting was still a trial and error kind of thing. So when I wanted your dad to go from energy rings to energy beams, well, I made a slight error. Ah, nuts! Anyway, I went straight to Tokyo to wrestle me up some plastic surgery. When some weirdo with an eye patch decides to do me in, I have no regrets! Ah, nuts! All because I caused a teeny tiny bit of catastrophic collateral damage. Anyway, while I was getting turned into a robot, I sent your dad out to the Kamandorsky Kaiju Boarding School. In the Bering Sea. Where he got his accent somehow. Does anyone have any borst? I can't listen to Utah Malone no ye sonsa without borst. You might as well give me a balalaika with only two strings. You and I both know that Utah Malone no ye sonsa is just a cheap knockoff of toast and nyanya jella. Okay, admittedly the Eastern European thing doesn't make any sense in retrospect, but this is the part of the flashback that has suddenly allowed me to introduce the Commodore Ski School bully. Gebra. He was an order a one. Picked on your dad for a whole fortnight back in 69. Until that fateful day when he repeated my error from years prior. Oh no. And there you have it. The origin of your dad and I. Pretty swell, huh? Sure, I guess. What about the mayonnaise? Top shelf of the fridge. All I found was ointment. If the ointment's in there, then what did I rub on my Ono? Oh, no. Hey, Grandpa, then what happened? Well, here's how it went. I have now grown into a full-fledged adult to the nuclear exposure in the Bering Sea. Woot! How would you like to go back through time to see the era of your childhood as an adult here? Huh. Let's do it. Yep, looks like Dad was here. I'm Sarazawa's clone. Arg! Oxygen destroyer backfire! Odo Island will cower at me, new sock puppet. I wonder if I'll ever get force choked into going crazy. A second thought, man. Let's not destroy humankind. You're here. And so, that's, that's when, when I, I told, told Godzilla, Godzilla, you're not going to win, Peanut Brain, so why even try? Wait, that was kind of mean. Sorry. Aren't you supposed to be some kind of a ghost? Not until 77, and then maybe I'll do some time traveling to narrate random scenes. That is all. I told the egg pack to Infant Island, it hatched, and my kids are going to cocoon you in silk. You're not going to win, so why even try? Ugh, I can't wait until I start winning again. Pretend he's a wall sweater! Hi, what happened to her twin sister? <laughs> <laughs> Now that the Planet X people have escaped into the future, it looks like we can finally return to- oh, What the- Now to play out my fantasy of how that meeting with the Earthmen should have panned out all those years ago. Dance for me, Godzilla of the future. I had been awakened, no thanks to Dio or the giant condor, but they did get rid of my foot fungus. Hello there, Charm. I'm planning on running for Congress in about 40 years. Can I count on you to be one of my constituents? What's your position on fun and the having thereof? Why did you take me out of school, older me? To teach you the ropes of being me before you become me, younger me. By the way, I'm going to call you Minya for the sake of ease. I prefer Minilla if we're going to do nicknames. Minya it is. Hi there, I intend to become Daikaiju president in about a decade or so, but before that, I'm going to set up a quote-unquote monster island here on Solgo. After the thaw, of course. After what thaw? Oh, you'll see. Now, about that nickname debacle. Just remember, you two, unless both sides win, no agreement can be permanent. Godzilla, darling, it will never work between us. I'm just not interested in a relationship. Well, the guy can try, can't he? Maybe my wandering eye got ahead of itself. By the way, doll, you need only use of one eye, right? I guess. Ow. I'm now going to warp Godzilla and Minya to the future for no apparent reason here. Huh. Reverse warp! Thank you for flying Imagination Airlines. 
Next up, a totally cool island full of monsters that was created by a mantid XP of future president Jimmy Carter. Why did you take me out of school again? So we could apologize to someone we've wronged. Again, we're so sorry about. Nonsense, my fault entirely. I should not have made you the target of my belligerent bullying. Incidentally, would you care for a sip of a particularly pleasant potion that transmogrifies the drinker into a more prodigious version of him or herself? It definitely isn't sugar water, if that's what you're thinking. I don't think I need anything like that. But my dad might be interested. You should see him when they're done converting him into a cyborg. Give it about five more years. Oh my, I'm such a huge fan. You're the guy who inspired me to become a CPA slash Atlantic City buffet owner. And you've also given me the courage to plan a run for Congress in about 35 years. What's your position on fun and the having thereof? Are you always going to only be three and a half years old? Yes, for reasons I cannot explain. Anyway, Godzilla, I digress. I'm a really big fan of yours. Would you sign my eyeball? You? Okay. I hope you didn't need full use of that hand for a while. I heard the weird squeegee sounding tape. Do you know what it means? I think it said beware of hippies bearing candy canes. Or maybe beware of penguins dressed as the dearly departed. But I'm not even sure of the latter, for you see the nebulan word for penguins is almost identical to the words for cockroaches and hippies. A bit mental, eh? Dude, I totally have a feeling that we're not going to remember any of this, and like in maybe about 39 years, we'll hear a similar tape and ask everyone the same thing. Come on, what are the odds of that happening? <laughs> Nah, are you okay? This is getting old. I must have programmed myself in some way to increase my own size! If robots can do that, I'll have to tell Gabra that Ted won't need his potion after all. Now, my friends, let's go listen to incomprehensible German rock music, shall we? I'll go out and fetch us some posh nosh. Well, Operation Invade Planet X was a bust! That female unit 037 is one meaty mick controller pants! Fight the simian mind control, Dad! Remember, you were created by humans, not the ack holes! Black hole aliens will survive. By the way, I love these new regenerative pants that they gave me. Nanites for the win! Yes, us for the win! You dragged me here for this? Well, I severed the mind control while old Moogle was busy getting his UFO out of impound. But I met a new friend in the process. Grandpa Gojira, I don't care if you're a cyborg. I'm in love with you. Would you like a ride in my almost brand new Ford Pinto? Wait, I thought you just wanted to be friends. Wait, why did you call him Grandpa? He doesn't have any grandkids. Yet. And so that's the story of how I met your grandma. I'm so confused. Is my grandma Titanosaurus? What? No, Titano's a dude. Your grandma's one smoking hot old dame. Oh, wait. I think I know what happened. I told you my show a timeline summary story again by accident. Oh, well, I guess that's close enough. Well, you filled in a lot of continuity discrepancies from the early tunes, but I do have a question. Are there any events in our history that are non-canon? Any tune where someone gets squished. Hey, Mac, you're for a rematch you want? Bring it on, appetizer. Yeah, where am I? In a dungeon. Hee <laughs> hee! Explanation! In 1976, Minnie trekked to Andromeda in Caesar's mothership, Echidna 1. There, we acted out a space opera he'd been working on for years. But we went too far and thought it real. Geber took over, and Toho Wars ensued. In the end, Darth and Son ruled, distant relations to our Godzillas. But I digress. I wanted to rule. But I lost focus post tokage. Though Minnie returned to Earth, I wanted to change the past. But wormholes I found wouldn't allow it. Crestfallen, I returned. But then, I learned that my best friend can travel through time and change history. But he 
refused to help and just forget about Bagan, so I decided to destroy the world. Hee <laughs> hee! I invented a black hole gun to be used in 2017. And guess what? A time traveler returned to 2011 to prevent its use, just as I planned. Celebi, your biological daughter from an alternate future. What? And now she will rescue you. Hey, I think your dad's been kidnapped. Then get me a new one. That's where you're wrong. She's a sociopath. Nonsense. I bugged her room. I gotta go help daddy. Oh. <laughs> Prepare for defeat, Manda! Unobtainium lines the walls and gives me your power somehow. I win! Mine whip! Woo! Where am I? Among friends! Your confusion attack worked, honey! One thing doesn't make sense, though. Why can I travel through time, mummy? It's hereditary, sweetie! Wait, does that mean... <laughs> yep! You knew about her history all along, didn't you? Yep! I like you! Tee hee! During our five-year chase, we frequently used time portals to transcend the limitations of the present. Did we not, my key lime pie? But who knew that our love would ultimately transcend all obstacles, my lemon meringue pie? Why does it seem like everyone has the ability to travel through time in these tunes? That's it! I need a temporal vacation! <laughs> Hello, Mr. Franklin. Can you help me to avoid this insanity? This madness? Madness? This is Philadelphia! High resolution camera, low resolution camera. High res, low res. High res, low res. <laughs> Eight minutes later... I can't believe... I ate the whole crowd! Say there, John Condor! Why do you have to eat everybody and stuff? Because... You know, it's wrong to go around eating people, so why don't you stop? No more! No more! Yeah! I have successfully reformed yet another homicidal maniac. Now we can adopt you to Helios and pretend he's our dog. What? What's going on here? Everyone's quanta are all jumbled up in that buzzard's belly. At least putting them back together will be a scoosh for the transporter. <laughs> Among friends! Wait, what happened to the cotton candy man? And here's how you calibrate the soul reattachers and the Heisenberg compensators. Arts 57 computators! They talk mince. On second thought, maybe you do less harm in security. How does a red shirt suit ya? Boo genre savvy! No red shirt for boo! They're just like chicken nuggets, only horrible. So here are some number to nine brand nuggets of Mulgarian advice. Mmm, yes. Number one, if you find yourself in a difficult situation, ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Number two, if you see Ramane in a store and think to yourself, I have some extra spending cash on me, but I don't want to waste it on Japanese novelty pop. I just have one thing to say to you. Think again, earring magic can. It's soda that you open by dislodging a marble. That's a no-brainer, people. Number three, if somebody treats you rotten, treat them nice. You'd be surprised how quickly things can turn around. We are going to eliminate you. You girls are really great singers. I love your distinctive polyphonic style. Thank you. We are no less likely to eliminate you. You might have to give it some time with some people. Number four, never end the list on number four. Number five, it is however okay to bid adieu on number five. Mmm, yes. Mm -hmm. Beep, beep, beep.
flashback. And every stomp my big feet make transforms the hills into pancakes. Flapjacks, you see, they look quite squished to me. And a boatload of metal makes the foothills fall flat. The foothills fall flat. The foothills fall flat. Just a boatload of metal makes the foothills fall flat in a most alarming way. Yes, Beep, 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 beep. Whoa, my head. Oh, my head. Oh, boy. Oh, dizzy. You don't want to go to Osaka. I don't want to go to Osaka. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. I read the news today, oh boy. Get this, and though the holes were rather small, they had to count them all. Now they know how many holes it takes to fill the Albert Hall. That's great! I'm going out for a walk. Yeah, you do that. Doo -doo -doo. Ah! The sun's trying to kill me! No, it's not. You weren't there. Oh, for the love of... Now oh, look, he's not trying to kill you. Look at his face. That's a look of confidence and friendliness. That's not the same son. What, we have two now? What is this, Tatooine? I'm going back inside. <laughs> Many hours later... <laughs> Hey, look, the sun's setting. Wait, if that's the sun, then that means never a gun. What are you still doing out here? Running from a Mario 3 sprite. And you? Eh, just chillin' with the moon. <laughs> ah! So, Mr. Bright, are you and Mr. Shine getting along all right? They had better be. Eleven hundred ducks. I have eleven hundred, eleven thousand, eleven ten thousand ducks. Multiply by ten to the Google and divide by ten thousand ducks. And sit right back and enjoy the show. You have eleven Google Plex ducks. Add so many more, so many more ducks than can fit in the Hubble volume. They collapse on themselves, and lo and behold, you have ultimate black hole duck. He's stronger, so much stronger than almost any other kind of duck. He went to Monster Island and fought Godzilla, but he still lost because... Well, it's Godzilla, folks. Duh! And that was a pretty little ditty about lots and lots of ducks. And if you learned anything from this song at all, it's that Godzilla can beat a duck. Black old duck, won't you quack and prove your ultimate? Black old duck, won't you quack and go back? No, well, no, well, no, well, no, well. <laughs> that Gabra always getting into mischief. Where am I? What's that? Hi there, Gabra. My name is Mark. I wished for control of Pop Star, but that's a long story. <clears throat> Born is the king of Israel. Wow, you even knew exactly which song that Monster X and I were singing. Yup, and I even did it in his voice. <laughs>
I float like Mothra 1961, and I sting like Mothra 2001. Merry Christmas, Movie House! Merry Christmas, Emporium! Merry Christmas, you wonderful old Toho Kingdom! SPOILER ALERT! Hello! We're the kaiju- Oh wait, that's not right. Hello! We're the kaiju critics! Filled with two Ks because when the Loch Ness Monster was a child, she was a kindergarten Kelpie! Any woozle, today we're going to review Earthbound. Best game ever! Worst game ever made! What? I didn't like it. At the very least, you have to admit it's bloody epic! Although if those kids in the game were real, they'd probably be pretty scarred by the time they got to the end. Everything's trying to kill me, the runaway dog, the annoying reveler, the cute little UFO, the Chompasaur, the great crested Buka, the mad taxi, dollies, clock, abstract, art, the craze, the sign, robo bump, yes, even the gas pumps are trying to kill me! You cannot grasp the true form of his attack! You cannot grasp the true form of his attack! Working for the night, Jeff! Yeah. Fixed this. Working through the night, JF fixed that. When does JF get some shut eye? He's going to break my legs now I can't walk. He's going to tear off my arms now I can only lie here. He's going to cut off my ears and take my eyes and he's going to take my mind. Ah! Great news, everybody. It's Dr. Andonuts. Um, yeah, sure. Any so we found Gygus. He's in the past and the only way to get you all back there is to transfer your souls into these robots. Even if you survive, there's no guarantee you'll make it back to your body. So, have fun! Why? I don't want to be a chosen one anymore! How could you not like the breakthrough graphics, the immersive gameplay, the innovative battle system, or anything else for that matter? I just don't like it, okay? Yeah. Anyway, I rate this game a 10 out of 10! 0 out of 10! Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, Wiggle Flabby Bubbick! Did you just say nobody's perfect in Vulcan? <laughs> Away. After it, it must not escape! Hey, heavy bazooka! My anti taxi! Wait for Boo! Look, everyone, it's Pokey Mint! For the Pickles! Boing! Ding! Zoom! Dakota! Hey, son, your grandpa's going to be busy today. Where did I put this month's issue of Irascible Codgers Monthly? This one has a whole article devoted to Homer Bedlow from Petticoat Junction. So, uh, meet your substitute babysitter. <laughs> Dad, this is almost as bad as the last time the grown-ups tried a new babysitter. All right, kiddies, here's how it's going down. I'm going to flip a coin. Heads, we go to the movies. Tails, we kill the Batman. Movies it is! Yay! That was fun, but now we've come to yet another fork in the road. Heads, we go get ice cream. Tails, we kill the Batman. Ice cream it is! Yay! I love you, Uncle Two-Face! Oh yeah, he was actually cool. Hey, Mr. Boo, what kind of fun stuff are we going to do today? Boo has assortment of arts and crafts! Ooh! Did Boo Blast you turn into chocolate? Yay! Hey, Mr. Boo, can I stay up late and watch TV tonight? What kind of TV? Well, there's a show on PBS that explores the question as to why the graviton is the weakest of the gauge bosons. Closed loop string make it not confined like others? Whoa! How did you? Boo, no M theory! M stand for margin! You know, funny 
anything happened recently, Iris? Mm, yes. Decided to visit my home planet after several eons, and it appears to have been right blown up. That's simply ghastly. And I think that you're the culprit. But I have never done anything that would cause even the slightest explosion. Oh, wait. Zeki? Boogie? Doog? <laughs> I had no idea. My sincerest apologies. No harm done, uninhabited for ages. Just, you know, a bit of a shock, old boy. May I buy you dinner to make up for my terrible error? Splendid! Let's have Mexican, shall we? Two explosions to make up for one, eh? What? Ha! Ha! <laughs> I'm finally here. Don't know how many times I repeated that theme, but never mind that. Time to take over. Hey, Control, I just had the best bowel movement of my life. Oh, Glenn, we have an intruder. What are you gonna do about it, sweet cheeks? I guess I'll just have to count. Is that battle armor? <laughs> okay, I'll go back to Earth now. Sorry. I now pronounce you wife and husband. And to celebrate, I'll blow up the dimension tide! <laughs> now everything is perfect. The ghostification algorithm entered! Pure tackle! Let's give it a go! Well, this is awesome, but now I have to worry about getting turned into chocolate. Well, if I do, I'll just become a ghost again. That is all. And now to teach you a skill that most monsters must learn. The ability to change your size at will. That sounds like a hoot. The trick is this. Think big thoughts when you want to get big. Like California, Texas, or Robert Wadlow. Wowee! That was swell, Pa! To shrink a few sizes, you need to think small thoughts. Like Delaware, Rhode Island, or Pauline Musters. Boy, you're the beef knees, Pa! I like to think so. Hey, listen to this, Fooj. I am the controller of Planet X, and I have invited you here to discuss something that is very important. But you said that already, like a couple hours ago. There's a spaceship. Don't worry, it's safe. You see, you can depend upon what I tell you. Well, that's all fine and dandy like a girl named Sandy, but she still didn't answer our question, controller. Yeah, what gives? I don't understand. There's a spaceship. Don't make me come after you. He'll do it. But I just showed it to you. Come on, we weren't born yesterday. That's just a cute little 170 second scale model. A very well put together model, I'll grant you that much, controller. I see you didn't skimp on the decals. Puts my half-scale model Sputnik rocket to shame, don't it, old buddy? Glenn, a half-scale version of that rocket would be over four stories tall. Yeah, the neighbors complain a lot about it being some kind of an eyesore or something, but I think it gives the whole neighborhood class. Titusville, Florida's never looked so nice, eh, Fooch? I can assure you, gentlemen, this is your spaceship. Full scale. NRFB, MNB. Uh, what? What? Controller, why did you get rid of the box? Ruins the collector's value, you know. All right, listen. I'm willing to let it go for half of my original asking price. Wait, what's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. We're making a sweet deal on a vintage mint condition 172nd scale model P1. Well, without the box. Yeah, I hope you had fun playing with it, controller. Getting it all scratchy and sticky with yeah, cotton candy and uh, caramel apples and yeah. Cola. I did have fun playing with it. We had many long adventures together in my playroom this past weekend. Yesterday we visited Titan and discovered a monster living in the methane lakes. We named it the Watcher in the Methane. I have a vast and glorious imagination. So we were right, weren't we, old buddy? That wasn't our spaceship on the controller's collider screen after all. You screen. Where's the real deal, controller? Ah. Uh.
Am I that transparent? Allow me to tell you the whole truth. The fact is that we dinged your vessel when we were trying to parallel park between two of our UFOs. We thought we could fool you with a 148, 172nd, 172nd scale replica that I had already built a couple weeks ago. We are currently shopping around for estimates to repair your real spaceship. Which begs the question, where's our spaceship? Currently at Body Shop 01. You're welcome to use our wormhole generator if you need to return to Earth in the meantime. Oh, by the way, there's this really horrible monster terrorizing our planet. Would you like to see it? I don't see why not. Here we got time. I will show you Monster Zero. They want to see Monster Zero, don't they, brother? They most certainly do. They most certainly do. Shall we show them? Oh, I simply cannot think of a reason why not. Oh, you're such a tease. True, brother. True. Thank you. Indubitably. Indubitably. Good evening, everyone. Tonight we're going to go on a journey back to the year 2008. Those were the days when our camera resolution was still too low to show my other arm, and before Gabra's extensive reconstructive surgery was totally complete. It was a time shortly after we converted the obscure Monster Chat studio into the original Kaiju Critic studio, Cinema 77. It was also around this time that we created an episode that has since been banned. Wait, what? We have a banned episode? Like a real series? We do. You see, we parody to the James Bond film Goldfinger, which we came to realize about a year later was severely lacking as far as the treatment of women was concerned. As such, the tune was banned in late 2009. Also, we kept mispronouncing Palladium. So, why are we showing it now? For archival value, mostly. But we do want to stress that we still feel Goldfinger contains a rather negative message in regard to the treatment of women, and therefore present this tune with a disclaimer, that when the episode was originally made, it was not intended to extol this aspect of the movie. I underprehend! And now, without further ado, here it is! The band tune! Hello! We're the Kaiju Critics! Spelled with letters! Twelve letters in all! This week we're going to review James Bond in the Quantum of Solace. Oh, this flick was so lame. Yeah! Hey! Wait! No, it wasn't! It was action packed to totally the opposite of unawesome What about the plot? It was so intangible that it left me feeling wonderful! Pyrotechnics, flashing lights, pretty things! It's like a pixie stick for my eyes! Remember when we OD'd on pixie sticks, son? Don't remind me. Incense and peppermint da 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 da! Yeah. Anywho, my problem with this movie is that it just isn't fun and it isn't trippy. It's dark, glum, and almost painful to watch. You're mean! It's nothing compared to classics such as Goldfinger. Unfortunately, we're only able to show you a clip of Goldfinger to prove our point. So we've constructed our own little parody, Palladium Antenna. Do you really expect me to talk Palladium Antenna? Oh, Mr. Bond, I expect you to pie. You expect me to pie? In case the speed of the pie be... Ah, I'm a pie! Anyway, that's what a James Bond film is supposed to be. People turning into pastries or some such. Hey, my part in this episode was too minimal. I think that thank you for watching today's episode of Two Toho Monsters Review a non Toho Movie. Good night, and remember, hey! Hello! We're the Kaiju Critics! Spelled with two Ks because we're endorsed by...
Hi. Me, of course. Anyway, today we're going to... Review my new Saturday morning cartoon series for the late 80s, Gorillas Riding Rock and Roll Horses. What? Gorillas Riding Rock and Roll Horses! 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 Gorillas Riding Rock and Roll Oh, all right, like, how great was that? I'd change those last lyrics if I were you. Say, why do you look so different, Black Moth? <sighs> I finished puberty in space or something. So what do you rate my new cart? Tune? I rate it a 9 out of 10. Yeah, 4 out of 10. Oh, like, thank you, Monster X. Everyone knows that the closer you are to number one, the better. What? Oh, but I'd really like to thank you most of all, Gabara, for being so honest. Therein lies, like, my opportunity for growth or whatever. But I, but he, but eh, yeah, never mind. Thanks for watching. And remember, we're still just as relevant to the 2010s as we were in the 2000s. Give or take a digit. Fan mail! Gear sharp, take it away! Have either of you, like, seen an anime before? If so, what are your favorites? If not, then just, like, tell us what animes you've heard of. You've had to have heard of at least one. Sha, you guys, like, totally rock Arissa. Well, I do like Pokemon, for obvious reasons. Dragon Ball Z, Big O, Azumanga Daio, they're some of my favorites. Oh, and I'm a big fan of Miyazaki films. How about you, Gabby? Set AM. Sonic the Hedgehog, the animated series, which ran on Saturday mornings from the early to mid-90s, is not an anime. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Okay, you're right. But you have to admit it's one of the best things ever. Granted, but it's not anime. But Princess Sally is so cute. That's irrelevant. Season one fan service for the win. Are you contractually obligated to mention that series wherever you go or something? Yes, until they uncancel it. Or until they make a movie that resolves the cliffhanger. Okay, there's not really a contract, but I really like that series. Jaleel White, you're the only true voice of Sonic the Hedgehog. Eh, you've got a point. Whoosh. Hello! We're the Kaiju Critics! Spelled with two Ks because we're the number one web original on Kashyyyk! <laughs> Sorry, I simply could not resist. Anyway, today we're going to review... Ugh, Batman the Animated Series. I'm in love with that show! I want to marry it and have its children! What? It's so gloomy and dark and cynical and... What? Hey, that's what a lot of people liked about that show! But just look at the result! What's wrong, Will Jake? I just watched the complete series. On DVD, too gloomy, must have animaniacs. Give me kitsch any day of the week. For example, what if Black Moth were Batman? All right, mister, I think I'm so great, Dark Knight. What's your secret identity? Oh, I'll like give you a hint. My name starts with a B and like ends with a Black Moth. Bruce Wayne, I know it. You're not really proving your point very well today. Eh, let's just agree to disagree. Anyway, I rate the series a 2 out of 2. What? Rejected. And now, Theron will sing the periodic table of elements. Hydrogen and helium and lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, calcium, indium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc, gallium, germanium, arsenic, selenium, bromine, krypton, rubidium, strontium, yttrium, zirconium, niobium, molybdenum, technetium, ruthenium, rhodium, palladium, silver, cadmium, indium, tin, antimony, calorium, iodine, xenon, cesium, barium, lanthanum, cerium, praseodymium, neodymium, promethium, samarium, europium, gadolinium, terbium, dysprosium, holmium, erbium, thulium, ytterbium, lutetium, apnium, tantalum, tungsten, rhenium, osmium, iridium, platinum, gold, mercury, gallium, lead, bismuth, polonium, astatine, radon, francium, radium, actinium, thorium, protactinium, uranium, neptunium, plutonium, americium, curium, berkelium, californium, einsteinium, 
Chromium and Elevium, Nobelium, Laurentium, Rutherfordium, Stubium, Seaborgium, Sporium, Classium, Mosnerium, Domstatium, Regenium, Copernicium, Ununtrium, Ununquadium, Ununfentium, Unhexium, Ununseptium, Ununoptium, and that's all the elements on the periodic table. Hi, uh, you all may remember me. My name is uh, Ziller. As you can see, I have kind of upgraded my design here through a steady regiment of cardio and subway. Now I can get from point A to point B a lot quicker, and I'll tell you what, point A to point B is my new favorite line segment. Oh, hi, Rodan, still steering clear of them fish. I keep telling you I ain't a pescatarian. You know what they say, denial is the first sign. But what if I invented it? eating fish yeah. Well then you'd be taking the first step to acknowledging that you have a problem. Catch 22! If you just said catch bunny foo foo, well I wholeheartedly agree. We can't have him hopping around the forest and bopping them field mice on the head now, can we? What is he, some kind of a goon? Seriously, you freak me out sometimes! <laughs> you said it! You wanna grab a poi? Razzleberry, please. <laughs> No razzleberry, and no shoe floor either. I mean pizza pie. <laughs> okay, wool on your half, and I'll get calamari on the other side. Oh boy, you're trying to tempt me, you vile temptress. What with your beguiling ways and whatnot. Tempter, not temptress. And calamari isn't fish, it's squid. They're cephalopods. True, but we all know that squid is a gateway dish to fish. Next thing you know, I'll be down on anchovies like there's no tomorrow. Okay, okay, we'll ask for one third wool, one third calamari, and what would you like on your third, Zilla? Just something normal like gyro meat. Gyro meat? That's kind of specific, isn't it? Oh yeah, like wool, isn't it? Okay, wool, calamari, and gyro Gyro meat. Gyro. Mothra, you're the most articulate of the three of us. You make the call. <laughs> this is the giant octopus. How can I help you? Mmm. Large pizza pie with wool, calamari, and a gyro meat. Hey, Mac, why didn't you just come right out and say you wanted the special, huh? You're wasting everybody's time here. <laughs> Let's see here. You also want an antipasto and two calzone. <laughs> Did she mention the calzones? I know it's a last minute addition, but this is important. I think she even remembered to ask for ricotta instead of mozzarella. Excellent, you're my kind of moth kid. <laughs> Nobody can resist a um, wool and calamari and gyro meat. Uh, okay, maybe you can resist it. Say, what are you looking at? I'm on my new favorite website. Oh, what is it? Oh, it's GrannyFannies.mon. GrannyFannies.mon. You know, this is highly disturbing, even for you. Who would visit this site? Oh my, what are you looking at? Granny Fannies? Is that a Stelgetti's keister? None other. Can I join you for a while? Always room for one more on the Granny Fanny Express. Choo choo! Oh my goodness, has everybody lost their mind? Que pasada! Rue McClanahan's booty is banging! Yeah. Hey Kumanga, don't you hope that your abdomen looks like that when you are that age? Darling, I do not care about such things. I will age with dignity, and whatever my caboose decides to do, I will support its decision. Just so long as it always stays at the tail end of my Granny Fanny Express. Granny Fanny Express? Seriously, is that a thing now? You know what, I'm out of here. Five days later. Hmm, why would they even make eggless nog? Are you still sitting here? I can't stop looking at Granny Fanny's. Where's Megalon? Oh, he left about four and a half days ago. Some people just don't have the stamina for this kind of work. As for me, I've been staring at B. Arthur's bottom for the better part of the day. I'm absolutely transfixed. You may need help. You realize that, right? Hey, I can walk away any time that I want. 
Oh, what? What is it? Click here to see Betty White's exquisite hindquarters. <laughs> Wait, it's a pay site? Screw this! They ain't charging my debit card! Wait, wait, are you saying that you've been spending the last five days browsing the free tour? If I answer yes, will you think any less of me? I'll actually think more of you. Anyway, do you think you have a handle on this thing now? For the most part, but I still like to say Granny Fannies! Who doesn't? Two things. One, this episode must be really risque in the UK. And two, didn't you used to eat old ladies? Oh, those were just tofu molds with food coloring. What about those old ladies who said you ate when you worked at Beast Buy in the supermarket? Look, haven't you figured out by now that I exaggerate sometimes? Yeah, it works for me. Wait, wait a second. When did .mon become a generic top-level domain? I don't know, but you're looking at the proud owner of Digi.mon! It is over. XJ2 has attained an advantageous position. You underestimate my power, Roman! Error. Is it possible you have a counter power? Correction. No. Saiyan, do not contend with Roman. But I must! But you cannot. But I must! <sighs> when I, like, finish puberty but in I space must. or something, I totally want to be like that but guy or whatever. But you cannot. But I must! But you cannot. Yet you must. How do you calculate that? At what point on a graph do must and cannot meet? Mons! Calcinate or death ray. D-brained. He's still alive. Storm lava, fetch me a pickle jar immediately. Boba Larva, stand there and give the fanboys what they want! Will do. When we land, snap his brain into my finest robot! Jet Jaguar, can you hear me? My name is Vegeta! Not anymore, it ain't! Where is Bulma? Is she safe? How should I know? Eh, uh, hold on. My psychic powers indicate that she's A-OK, -okay. and as an added bonus, she finds robot men to be a turn-on. So, wanna be my newest loyal lackey? Your most loyal lackey? My most loyal lackey has been and always will be Mew. Hello. But you can be my second most loyal. My Saiyan pride would never allow such an indignity. Pride Schmide, would you do it for a Klondike bar? Hot dog! Looks like Vegeta, I mean Jet Jaguar, has a new empress. If you don't count the one at home, am I right? Huh? Am I right? <laughs> I find your curmudgeonly ways amusing. Now silence! I will teach you how to time travel, so that if anyone actually tries to track a timeline of events in these tunes, we'll be ready for them. To the year 1973. I built Jet Jaguar, you know. Oh, really? Well, no. Celebi did. But sometimes I like to think that I did. <sighs> Are you up for a cup of tea? You know it. Hello, we're the Kaiju Critics. Spelled with two Ks because the word coconut would look so much cooler if it were spelled K-O-K-O-Nut. In celebration of the long-awaited release of Part 1 of The Hobbit later on this year, we're going to review Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy today. I didn't like this incarnation. It strayed too far from the books. Where is Tom Bombadil? Why is Faramir so mean to Frodo? Why is Sauron a giant flaming eyeball? Why? 
Unlike my unpleasable counterpart here, I absolutely adored Jackson and Company's vision. The only change they made that I didn't quite agree with was when they had the Witch King break Gandalf's staff. Let me put it this way, if Middle Earth were a business, that would be similar to a summer intern firing a member of the board of directors. That aside, I felt that most of the changes were to the film's benefit. And now, for no real reason other than the fact that we can, here's our own version of Lord of the Rings with Super Mario Brothers. What? Mario, destroy the ring. No, Luigi. The ring, she's the mine. What? No! Bye-bye. <laughs> Whoa, somebody just found my ring of power. And it's in the one place where it can be destroyed. Why is it in the one place where it can be destroyed? Oh, crap, 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 crap. Gives us our precious. We want it. Goomba. Goomba. No, you no get the precious. Let us put it this way. Gives us our precious or we bites off of you finger. Here. Take the ring. You were so mean. Yay. Oops. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Um. Oh, oh no. Hey, I sense that you guys found my ring of power. So, where is it? We dropped it in the lava, sir. I see. Then we've only got a few seconds until this entire place blows! Mr. Scott, for to beam to the Shire! Hi, Luigi. I know. I rate Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy a 4 out of 10. Give us a special edition with Tom Bombadil, and then we'll talk. I, on the other hand, think that his adaptation is a masterpiece. I rate it a 9.5 out of 10. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, remember, if you find a ring that can turn you invisible, don't wear it. Instead, deposit said item in your nearest volcano. As for me, The Lord of the Rings is one of my favorite franchises in the whole wide town. Don't you mean world? Sometimes he uses the word town when he means to say world. Yeah, I don't get it either. Hey, Lurst is the Royal. I'm feeling kind of woozy. What's the trouble, Mac? What the wow? I woke up this morning and I discovered this glowing rash. I am so glad I sent Little Godzilla to his aunt's house this weekend. Do you know if it's contagious? Never seen anything like that, bud. Hmm. Hold on, just one second. Paging Dr. Baragon. Dr. Baragon, you have a patient at the front desk. Hey there, Goji, oh boy. Looks like you've got an old-fashioned case of the meltdowns. The meltdowns? Yeah, your cousin HB Godzilla and his son Godzuki, they had a case of that a while back. They got over it on their own, but you seem to have it pretty bad there, buddy. My prognosis, the end of the world as we know it. I don't really want to destroy the world. 
And what are my options? Well, how about this? In the name of the Lord Jesus, you are completely healed. Whoa, that was amazing. Faith healing. Anybody can do it. So, how much do I owe you? Eh, nothing. Hey, isn't this the 150th tune? Hey, the doctor is right. We gonna do anything big like we did for the 100th tune? Nah, I think that we'll keep this one humble. Well, gotta get going, Doc. Thanks for all of your help. No problem, Goji, anytime. Nurse Destroy, I'm heading out to Ristorante Il Polpo for lunch. Want me to pick you up anything? One micro oxygen calzone, per favore. Mmm, mmm. Una buena scelta. Hello. Hello! We're the Kaiju Critics! Spelled with two Ks because we're both cute and cuddly! You know, we never got to review those Godzilla movies a few years back, so why don't we... Watch the more Destroyer the Pooh today! What? Here's a scene from Destroyer the Pooh and the Blustery Day! Rain, rain, rain came down, 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 wrote the disembodied lyricist. Till the sea rose right out of its bed and swept right into Anguirus's. For Anguirus he was startled, it showed right on his face. So in his desperation, a phone call he did place. Like somebody totally help me, man. Rescue my dinner. Iron oxygen destroyers were rescued. They'd love to weather a lot. But I destroyer absorbed micro oxygen. The sea absorbed the destroyer. In the water twirled and tossed the destroyer on an oxygen destroyer. Yeah. Mail. Shocker us. Give us the scoop. The scoop? Yeah. Dear Kaiju Critics, I am your newest fan. I also have something to ask you. Monster X, why do you hate Gabra? And Gabra, if you're 43 years old, why do you like Winnie the Pooh? From Gigan43, peace out, y'all. I don't hate Gabra. I love the guy. Monster X Gabra, la la. What's your bad romance? Well, I wouldn't call it a bromance, um, yeah. Anyway, would you care to field this newest fan's second question, Gabby? Sure thing, X-Wing. Contrary to popular misconception, I wasn't born in 1969. But I digress. Winnie the Pooh is a timeless classic. It's about a stuffed teddy bear that can sing and dance. Wait a second, that's pretty freaky when you think about it. Guy again, 43, I want to thank you for rekindling my interest in the Winnie the Pooh franchise. Oh great, now he's going to decorate his bedroom with Winnie the Pooh characters again. Ah, 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 it's not called my room anymore. Oh no. It's called my Kanga and Room. Ugh. Excuse me, sir? I am looking for the nearest 7-Eleven. Don't you know who I am? I am Gamera, 
friend to children. I am so defensive of the younger generation that I simply exude friend to childrenness. Many films regale the world and yes, even the asteroid belt with tales of my harrowing exploits. I am 120 tons of pure, semi-aquatic reptile. I may not be the only defender of children, but mark my words, I do take my job very seriously. Can you make a similar claim, my friend? I challenge you. Nay, I challenge you, challenge you. What is your modus operandi, friend? What is your mission objective? What is your some other thing that can be abbreviated MO? I am simply not sure. Of course you're not. Wait, Missouri. Missouri can also be abbreviated MO. The show me state. No, I have nothing to show them. Nothing to prove. Why do they task me with such a vague, unpleasant burden? I deny the birthright of all Missourians to have me show them something. I have no commitment to Missouri. There are only few commitments I have made, one of which is to be Gamera, friend to children, the friendiest of friends to the childreniest of children, and not a false friend either. Or as the French would say, not a false friend either, but they would say it in French. And perhaps they would add an emoticon and I would ask, why the crooked smile, my friend? And they would respond, it's just italicized. I really need a hot dog and a Slurpee. Please tell me, where is the closest 7-Eleven? The 7-Eleven, what does that name even mean? I think the original stores were open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. I'll tell you where the name comes from. The same place where I got my hat. Oh boy. There's a story behind this hat. I sauntered past an open manhole one day and saw a captain's hat staring me right in the face. Oh yes, I was once a colonel with the JSDF, the first kaiju in history to attain such an honor. But that captain's hat, it called to me. It said, Gamera. You get a line, I'll get a pull, honey. You get a line, I'll get a pull, babe. Oh, you get a line, I'll get Pull, you'll go fishing in this manhole, and buddy, I'll be your hat today. <laughs> and that's the story of the hat of Gamera, friend to children. I am so glad you asked about the origin of my hat, and now you know. Ugh. <sighs> You're not going to tell me where the 7-Eleven is, are you? Oh, that! Just look behind you! What the- Hi, sweetie, what are you working on? Project for school. Aw, oh, need any help? Think you can find me some plutonium-239, daddy? Sure, I think we have some in the pantry. Wait, are you building an atomic bomb? No, silly daddy, I'm building a cobalt bomb. A cobalt bomb? That's much worse. Oh, it's just a doomsday device. Lighten up, daddy. Didn't you come to this timeline to prevent global annihilation? I came to this timeline because somebody found out about Manda's plan to lure me here by blowing up the world. Whoever it was bounced an SOS off a retro reflector floating a couple light years out. The early warning allowed everyone in my timeline to get to safety before the dimension tide fired in 2017. And I left a temporal clone of myself to take care of mommy and daddy prime. I see, sort of. But why are you building a cobalt bomb? Can't a little girl have a hobby? Aww, you're so cute that I can't help but overlook your unsurpassed megalomania. Not megalomania, daddy. Gigalomania.
I'll give you 500 billion mon for the whole shebang. You see, Daddy, I've already made a massive profit. I thought you said this was a project for school. Details, details. It's always details with you, Daddy. I'll give you 500 billion and one mon. What is this? The price is right. Mothra, the bomb is yours. Your daughter really is the sweetest girl I've ever seen. Don't I know it? Great news, guys. Millennium Gigan and I just got hitched. Whoa, that's really awesome. Where did this happen? At Dallas Comic Con. We met Mr. Stan Lee himself. And one of the Dr. Manhattan cosplayers was an ordained minister. Does anyone object to the union of these two cybernetic space chickens? I do. Anyone except Snidely Whiplash? Okay then, let no one tear asunder what the Lord in Heaven has brought together. So, how was the wedding night? Be gentle. Decidedly intense. Come on, I need more details than that. You're a pervert. Um, I'll tell you what happened, Monster X. Awkward. Not in the slightest. I put on me longest fake... What? Mogra, please stop beeping. Mm, right okay, would you repeat that for me one more time? Sure thing. I put on me longest fake Spock ears and read how to build a cobalt bomb for fun and profit by Dr. Benton Rover and then I spilled an entire can of juicy juice. Got some cleaning supplies out of the cabinet and then we cleaned up the mess. Oh, thank goodness. Speaking of which, hey, Bagan, when are you and Gary Sharp going to tie the knot? Wah! Um... She totally left me for another hombre. I, like, totally like your hat. There's a story behind this hat and how it came to its present donor. Camera! Friend to children! It's toy freaking triste! Oh, come now. You'll meet somebody new. Of course I will. I'm freaking pagan. So I'm weak, Hachundo. My pecs are like a couple of haplon shields, my friend. This old Gerasharp thing. It just makes me sad, you know? Well, I know something, or should I say someone who will cheer you up. Ta-da! Oh, it's the prettiest of pretty boys. Honest. But how did you know that Gerasharp and I broke up? I only just told you. Yeah, I knew that thing with Gerasharp wasn't going to last. You were always so bored. I got the pony when you first started going together. I love you so much, my friend. I want to give you a mouth kiss. Yet I am repulsed by the prospect. You know because I like the ladies. But if you really want one, then I'll try my best to keep down the vomit. No, no, that's quite all right. Seriously. Just have fun, you crazy pantemporal dragon thingy. You. Oh, boy. Well, my attempt to foil that wedding went awry, but perhaps I can get an autograph from Mr. Patrick Stewart. What is your bidding? Oh, I've got a lightsaber! Whee! Silence. The Dimension Tide has been destroyed, and now the world will prosper. You have failed us. Confusion! I thought you were backing me so that retaking the Andromeda Galaxy would be mine to do! We could care less about Andromeda. We wanted the world blown to dust. But thanks to your inability to stop Celebi, our timeline is safe. You have failed us for the last time. 
No, I'm sure I could fail you plenty times more. Your mind control is lifted. Oh, I have control over me thoughts again. Kunis Tame? Tame Kert Galore. All of this freedom of thought is making me hungry. A pot of cold cannon with a flagon of blue milk straight from the teats of a hairy bentha. Whee! The time has come for Plan B. We must use the Global Extermination Protocol. Energy Shield, activate. <coughs> Cobalt bomb that we procured from an ironic source. Detonate. <coughs> what? It's a trap. Kevin Sorbo must have done this. He probably heard what we said about Andromeda. Actually, it was I, Celebi. I finally caught the masterminds behind the grand conspiracy. My loyal lackeys, Mew and Jet Jaguar, helped me to design this elegant trap. Mew wrote the instructional cobalt bomb book under an extremely inappropriate pen name. As a cover. And Jet Jaguar fetched our lunches. Do you have any rare candy calzones? Let me check in the back, okay, bud? Click. So it's you. You have discovered oh, our evil secret. But the real question is why? Why be so hideously evil? Humans and Kaiju alike have frequently called upon the services of Mothra. And how is she ever thanked? We sent her thank you cards. She has never received a single one. Wait, wait a second. Your address is 1961 Vampire Plant Drive, right? A long time ago, we moved to 1964 Leopard Doctor Lane. Did you remember to fill out a change of address card? This might explain a lot. We apologize. No worries. Just don't go around being omnicidal anymore, okay? Okay. There's just one little thing I need you to do for me. Anything! In place of the Dark Lord Manda, you shall set up a Queen, Queen of Andromeda. Andromeda. And I shall not be dark, but beautiful and terrible as the morning and the night. There is the sea and the sun and the snow upon the mountain, and as dreadful as the storm and the lightning, stronger than the foundations of the earth. All shall love me and despair. <gasps> And now my plan is complete. Hey, those girls looked like me. That's all I have to say. <laughs> we Father, I feel a disturbance. I think something weird has happened. Huh. Manila Atmosphere Treader, my son, I don't think we shall be ruling the Andromeda Galaxy as father and son much longer. Oh, well, should we take the Gotango out for one last spin? I don't see why not. We Stay tuned. Godzilla is about to make his way through the Heisei timeline on a pogo stick for some reason. Hey, shockers. How is it going? This Super X is missing just one thing. Blood. Hey, Biolante. What's up, sis? How's it hanging, bro? What about me? Sorry, Deutelios. You got cut. Hey, Mecha King Ghidorah. Hey, Batra. Hey, Morphra. Arr, ahoy, matey. Shiver me timbers. Hey, daddy -o. Hey, Rodan. That's my boy. Wait, you're not the right Mega Godzilla for this movie. Hey, bro. Hey, Mogra. Hey, son. Salutations. Beep. Mm, greetings. Cheerio, governor. What? Hey, Destroyer. Not so fast, bud. You may pass only if you solve this riddle. That is craggy, but crimson. Crimson, but crabby. Crabby, but craggy. All stuffed with crust. <laughs>
Is it you? Wow, that was quick. You may proceed. Whee! There goes the best son of a bum I've ever seen. Buy a pogo stick. I think I'll buy a pogo stick. Hey, if I give you this 1999 Mercury Sable, will you promise not to kill everyone? I think we can work something out. Oh, this was such a sweet deal, it purrs like a kitten. And it's so roomy. You know what? I could actually see myself starting a family in a few years because of this baby. Hey, shocker us, no any unusual parody songs? This is the story of a girl who cried a river and drowned the whole world. And though she looked so sad in photographs, it doesn't really matter, because everyone drowned. Ugh, well that was just plain upsetting. Well, it's not as though it actually happened, but yeah, sorry about that, Camoebus. What if I were to say that all of them got to their own personal submarines on time? Were they yellow? Yep. Then we're a-okay. Kaiju critics. Two Ks. Hey, Monster X, remember the last time you turned into Kaiser Ghidorah? Hey, Monster X, look, it's a full moon. What? Oh no! Cool transformation sequence initiate. Oh! Oh! oh. What's the wolf for? <laughs> I am now Kaiser Ghidorah, and I will read a fan mail. Hooray! Could you transform again for little old me? I would if I could, but I have neither a full moon nor a wolf. What about a three wolf moon? No, you don't understand what you've done. A three wolf moon will cause me to transcend the Kaiser Ghidorah stage. You, you, you mean there's another form beyond Kaiser Ghidorah? The that's impossible. Were such a plane to exist, then I, the prince of all cyborgs, would have reached it eons ago. That doesn't make any sense. <coughs> I am now Kaiser Orochi, and I will read a fan mail. Hooray? See, Fonzie writes. Is there any monster in the Kaiju universe that can fight, survive, and defeat Chuck Norris? I, Kaiser Orochi, am one of the select few. I can defeat him simply by uttering his initials. C N. We just heard over the radio that Chuck Norris got KO'd out.
out of nowhere. And do you know what KO stands for? Knockout? <laughs> no, it stands for Kaiser Orochi. Ah. Lante, how do you like my new form? It's awe-inspiring. You're almost as strong as her now. Aren't I stronger? My sensors indicate that she's over 9,000! Time stronger than your current form. What? Don't worry, I won't make you look bad in front of your friends. Thank, Thank you. you.